Get ready to see some great racing in America's Great Plains. The Five Hour Energy 400 getting ready to take the green flag. Let's have a look at the Geico starting grid for tonight's race where Kevin Harvick has his second pole of the season. He's the first repeat pole winner. And Joey Logano, his fourth front row start of the year. Row two, Brad Keselowski, 2011 Kansas win. Carl Edwards with his best start of the year. Kyle Larson, his career best time trial start. And Kurt Busch, runner up here in October. 2003 winner, Ryan Newman with two time Kansas winner, Tony Stewart. Danica Patrick made the final round of knockout qualifying for the second straight week, and two-time Kansas winner Greg Biffle. Jamie McMurray, whose hometown is just 150 miles south of here, and Eric Almirola, top ten in both races here. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, two two-time Kansas winners. Then Brian Vickers coming off his best finish of the season, and Paul Menard, top ten in his last three starts here. Casey Kane, five runner-up finishes since his last mile-and-a-half win. And Justin Allgaier with his best career cup start. And rounding out the top 20, Austin Dillon and Ricky Stenhouse. Let's talk to the fastest man in the house. What do you say? Hey, Kevin Harvick, it's DW. You got a copy, my friend. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, you chose the outside. Uh, would you like to share it with us why? Uh, well, that's what I did last fall. I feel like on the restarts, you don't want to be pinned down under, underneath somebody. Uh, the second lane has been pretty good uh, last night during the truck race on the restarts and was good for us in practice as well. So I uh, just feel like you don't want to have to take that chance of being on the inside and getting loose. Harv, what's your biggest concerns for tonight? I know at blazingly fast speed, you're on the pole with a new track record. You won here from, in the fall from the pole. What are you worried about tonight? I think you said it tonight, uh, just as to what exactly that brings to the handling characteristics of the car. Um, obviously, I think a lot of the same things are going to come into play from a strategy standpoint. So I feel like the groove is going to widen out a little bit, but I, I still think that um, you know, you're going to have some things to fight uh, that, we, that we haven't seen before during the day. Well, she was freaky fast on Friday. Let's see what she got on Saturday night, bud. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Kevin Harvick starts from the pole. Budweiser Speed Tweets is the new interactive game where fans compete for a chance to race go-karts with Kevin Harvick. Go to Budweiser.com slash Speed Tweets for official rules and to register. Sunset is coming in 10 minutes, a little earlier in this race than we thought. Let's get down to Pit Road for late-breaking stories, beginning with Matt Yoko. Mike, Kevin Harvick may have the car to beat, listen to many different analysts, but the sleeper could be the 42, the young man, Kyle Larson. They put together a great program so far this weekend, fastest in practice, had a great run in qualifying, he starts fit, they continue to build around this young man, and he's hoping to become the first rookie in four years to score a win, Steve Burns. Thank you, Matt. Brad Keselowski had a good qualifying effort. His crew chief, Paul Wolf. Hey, how you doing, Brad? His crew chief, Paul Wolf, said that they're fast by themselves, but they never could quite get Brad comfortable in traffic. So that's one concern, but I do know the track will transition as it gets dark here now, celebrating her first Mother's Day as a mom, Krista Voda. Thank you very much, Steve Burns. The question mark for the nighttime is not really a problem for Joey Logano. The reason he raced in the truck race last night, he said, give me 45 minutes and I will know all about this place at night. So I went up to him on the grid before he got in his car and said, so is 45 minutes enough? Do you know what you need? He said, I learned a lot. Jeff Hammond. When it comes to learning that, Chris, up, one of the things these drivers do know about Kansas, the wind continues to blow here. It blows down the back straightaway. It means off of turn two. Talked to our pole sitter, Kevin Harvard, earlier today. He said, Jeff, it's going to be an interesting one and two and a more exciting three and four. And reason for that, side force on these cars. It will help you get through one and two and help get the car turned down the back straightaway. It's going to shoot you down that back straightaway. But when you get to turn three and you drive off into three, it's going to make the front nose want to slide up, make the car hard to turn and off the four, it's going to get loose. So guys, this, this win is going to play havoc all night long. Thanks, Jeff. They'll get one to go when they come by here tonight's Ford EcoBoost Kansas Track Facts. This is the first night Sprint Cup race at Kansas. Roush Fenway Racing has four wins here, tied for the most all time. Both wins last year here were won from the pole. Going to get one to go as they come around. 
qualifying for the pole here 194 plus miles an hour. Now, I should not joke about speed. Wednesday I said it'll be the slowest my son's ever driven when he goes to get his learner's permit because he's been racing Bandoleros and Legends cars since he was 10. He's now 15. Gay took him to get his learner's permit. And on the way home, five minutes from the DMV, she looked calmly and said, you better check your speed. 85, 80 and a 65. If he'd been pulled over, it would have been the shortest learner's permit in the history of the state of North Carolina. But she was very calm about the whole thing. And he said, Dad, I was concentrating on staying in my lane. So good job, Scott. And I got to nominate Gay for Mother of the Year. No kidding. 82 degrees right now. Winds out of the southwest at 20 miles an hour. Forecast partly cloudy. I rode with him later in the day to track practice right on the speed limit. I said I'd give him five miles an hour, but not anymore. Not a, not an ounce more. Speaking of miles per hour, pit road speed here, 45 miles per hour in the field window for Sunoco Race Fuel, about 46 to 50 laps, 400 miles, 267 laps of race. Yeah, I think we got to, they gave one to go, but I think they've uh, put the lights back on the pace car, and it looks like we're going to run another lap here. There are some sprinkles falling, not much, but there are a few sprinkles that are falling right now, so... NASCAR wants to be super, super cautious. But you saw the weather radar earlier and a little bit of green indicating rain activity. We can work around that. It was that big, heavy red area uh, that NASCAR was worried about that had lightning with it. And that moved away toward the north, off toward Kansas City proper. So hopefully this is just a drop or two and we're just a lap or two from getting this race underway. Tonight's five-hour Energy 400 will benefit the Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Now, that's a nonprofit group that supports the military's special ops forces and their families. From May 1st through July 31st, if you buy a specially marked red, white, and blue bottle of new Cherry Five-Hour Energy, Living Essentials will donate a nickel to this great organization with a minimum guaranteed donation total of $75,000. Details at 5hourenergy.com. Been a great week for Clint. Uh, renewed his contract for three more years. Five Hour Energy, Brian Patty, the whole crowd's going to be together. The gang's all together. He and his wife found out they're going to be parents of a young, of a son. Been per quite a week for this fella. I, I can't read you what he tweeted about the uh, I, ultrasound. I, I read it. Yeah. So, But you can go on Clint Boyer's timeline and find it for yourself. It's pretty funny. Um, it's a boy. And it is his 300th career Sprint Cup Series start. Oh, by the way, Denny Hamlin won Talladega last week, and that was his 300th career start in the Sprint Cup Series. Quite a number of notables in the sport have won in their 300th start. Krista? Just, Mike, want to give you a quick update on Austin Dillon. I mentioned that Joey Logano was in the truck race last night to uh, to get some notes for racing at night in Kansas. So was Austin Dillon driving the three car here tonight. He was in the truck race, and he has raced trucks at Kansas, but never at night. So he also was getting out the notebook. And a special Mother's Day shout-out. Uh, his mom, Tina, joked with me that, you know, she watches Austin's dog during the week. Austin named his dog Dude. She said, I love my son, but I hate yelling across the motor coach lot. Come here, dude. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Oh, boy. <laughs> Here are the drivers in tonight's race who raced last night in the SFP 250 in the Camping World Truck Series. Kyle Busch, the winner. But a lot of other drivers, in fact, all the rest of them, I think, were paying close attention. You heard Kevin Harvey talk about it. Also, even though they're running a little different tire combination than last night, a lot of crew chiefs watching that race last night as well. All right, we're going to get one to go this time by and get ready for a start here. Here's Steve Burns. Mike, interesting note from Jason Burdett, the car chief on the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. He said today that this is an important race because under the lights tonight, under the lights next week at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and then under the lights again for a good part of the Coca-Cola 600 on a mile and a half. So this race has more significance over the next few weeks, not just this evening. Absolutely. And you see Junior shaking the wheel, moving the car around. That's, that's what we call, that's when the spotter calls down on radio and says, okay, let's clean them up, let's get a little heat in the tires, and let's get ready to go. The sky has lightened considerably off to the west. The bad weather has moved to the north. We're ready to race. Lights are out atop the Toyota Pace car. And there you see the blue sky off over turn two. 
We remind you that last year, both races here were won from the pole. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick. Harvick on pole tonight. Yeah, well, Kevin Harvick's been on the pole lately. Uh, kind of looks like he might be in position to get to victory lane. Did the same thing at Darlington just a few weeks ago. And you hear you hear them cleaning up the tires, spinning the rear tires so that when you come down here and drop the green flag, that doesn't happen when the flag comes out. Right now, just trying to get the tires clean and get some heat in the tires. All right, weather's moved on to the north. We're severe clear and ready to go for 400 miles in the Great Plains tonight. Yeah, I think it's so cool that the Jenna uh, Boyer's down here in the flag stand. She's gonna wave the flag tonight to start this race. I know it's Mother's Day tomorrow. I know there's a lot of moms that have sons in this race tonight. And folks, tonight, it's boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing on for you mothers. Harvick with a jump, but Murray to the bottom, takes him three wide into turn one. That resolves itself. Danica got stuck in the middle. Three wide out of two. Whoa. Keselowski got freight trained on both sides. Boy, Keselowski was in a lot of trouble right there. Cars going around on both sides of him. He was backing up fast to turn three. Now, we'll mention that our cameramen, usually stationed on the rooftop of the main grandstand, due to that lightning threat, not yet allowed to return to their post. So the robotic cameras around the speedway will take you through here as they go three wide for a ways. Mm, that was four wide and almost oh. five wide right here at the start finish line. You can run down on the apron here on this racetrack. So when you see cars below the white line here, that's not out of bounds. But we're already starting to see some drivers work that second groove. I know Michael Walter and I were talking before our pre-race show. He felt strongly that they'll be up running against the wall maybe before this race is over. Yeah, that's why I'm glad that we haven't had any rain later because those trucks last night put a distinctive black groove around this racetrack. And it's about a lane and a half high. Uh, so that outside is not that bad tonight. If you like your coverage low level, you're going to enjoy this from wall level from the uh, onboards and below ground level we'll give you these pictures and now our cameramen are allowed back to the roof they have been cleared to get back in position and boy we're glad to have them as we complete three laps under green kevin harvick has led them all from joey logano and a good gap back a full second from logano back to carl edwards in third kurt bush and kyle larson yeah, I think Kevin made a good decision. Kevin Harvick in the four to start on the outside. He said he saw that payoff last night here in the truck race, and so he used that uh, same strategy tonight and got him the lead, and he's uh, pulling around here pretty fast right now. Now yeah, we're riding with Clint Boyer now in that 15 car. Clint was fast in both practice sessions. He just did not get a good qualifying run. Started in 23rd, and you can see now he's the biggest mover in our first four to five laps of this race. He's already up to 17. And that seems to be the way the Toyotas are. You look at the Gibbs car. They don't qualify all that well, but when the race gets going, they seem to find the front. So for whatever reason, the Toyotas don't have that blazingly fast qualifying speed, but they race really well. Austin Dillon underneath Paul Menard, and Menard has been slipping back. He has lost now six positions, about to go seven as Marcus Ambrose moves to the inside. And here comes Kyle Busch and Allmendinger behind him. But for that battle, the field is pretty much single filed out here, and they cover about half the length of one lap. Fifth place, Tony Stewart underneath Kyle Larson and Stewart into the top five. Well, I, really, I, I like what Tony Stewart and his crowd did. They, they really worked hard on his car all through the practice, getting it to race well. And then, it, then they bolted the tires and tape, and doggone if it didn't qualify well. They only made one little mock practice qualifying run at the end of that final practice. And whenever he qualifies in the top ten as he did, you know he's going to be a factor in that race. Better look out. And I don't think it hurt any that his teammate, Kevin Harvick, set a new track record here in the process. Probably got some good information from that team. All four of the Stuart Haas cars with great qualifying efforts and all starting inside the top ten. Danica Patrick has dropped to 12th from ninth. Yeah, but all those uh, Stuart Haas drivers, uh, Danica included, say their cars are very fast and very comfortable to drive. She got shuffled uh, on the first lap when J Jamie Mack took them three wide. Jamie McMurray in the one. 
Brad Keselowski has fallen from third to eighth while McMurray in the number one just ahead is up four spots from where he started. Yeah, Kozlowski got off to a shaky start. That first opening lap, they were around, going around him. I don't know if something happened to his car on the start, but he didn't get going. He lost several spots, but now he's fighting his way back. Another driver that's been on the move, to no surprise, he's been on the move all year long here in 2014, is Jeff Gordon, that 24 car, started outside the top 10 in 13th, and now he has moved up to the 10th position in the top 10. And, Mike, I think you were a part of it. How about celebrate the 20th anniversary this past week of that first Sprint Cup Series win of 88, did it at the NASCAR Hall of Fame? Yes, with uh, Marcus Smith of Charlotte Motor Speedway, and they made a great presentation to Jeff. Uh, they got hold of his gloves from that victory. 20 years ago from the JGI office made a nice collage with them and uh, I listened carefully to Jeff's suppressor and never have I heard him in such a long time as confident and committed to trying to win this championship as he is right now. Well you remember Dale Earnhardt Sr. gave him such a hard time because he was emotional it was his first win and he was Actually, he was crying in victory circle when he won that race and Earnhardt wore that poor kid out all the way to the banquet. Yep when he toasted him with a glass of milk. <laughs> These two right here, they are racing each other hard. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 car just drives by the outside of Clint Boyer in the 15. Dale Jr. takes that 16th spot away. Meanwhile, Tony Stewart's moved to fourth, passing his teammate Kurt Busch. The top three remain, Harvick, Logano, and Edwards. You know, Larry, sometimes we talk about the 24 car, for instance, being good on the long run. We got a, got a little battle going on here. But always talk about the car being good on the long run. And, and sometimes I think, well, maybe it's not the car. Maybe it's the driver that's good on the long run. Maybe he has to get comfortable and get in his rhythm. And, and so it kind of, the car and the driver complement each other. Well, I think that's definitely the case a lot of times we talk about a race with Jeff Gordon, that 24 car. And look at how Gordon has caught this group and gotten very close up to the 42 of Kyle Larson couple of young fellows. I still think Gordon's a young fella. He's 42. To me, that's young. But uh, two young fellows who cut their we teeth on open wheel. Mike, that guy on the outside is young. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Kevin Harvick leads in Kansas. Kevin Harvick leading. Beautiful blue sky off to the west now. We asked you to show us how you get ready for race day. Here's a KFC social media pit stop. Oh, uh, how about that? A chicken corsage for prom night. From Sean Ireland now. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Carl Edwards. No change in the front three. As Harvick moves up to lap David Gilliland, the 37th place car. I tell you what, there was, there was some real communication problems here between the 16 and the 43. Greg Biffle in the 16, he had a run on Amarillo in the 43. I don't know what happened there, but uh, I don't think Kevin or uh, that, that Biffle was real hard, happy with the 43 no. car. Uh, meanwhile, Jeff Gordon has moved up to seventh. Danica Patrick back up into the top 10 in ninth as Kyle Larson drops to 10th and you ride with Jimmy Johnson 15th. See on the front end of Tony Stewart's car here, a little bit of debris in that grill opening. These guys were being pretty aggressive with tape on the nose to begin with, so it could be running a little warm. Yeah, Mike and I were down on pit road, Larry, and I was shocked at how much tape some of these cars have on. Some had none. Others were about half blocked off. Matt? Mike, about four laps ago, Chad Johnston, Stewart's crew chief, asked him to keep an eye on the gauges because of the debris on the grill. You mentioned about the practice. They were off in the first session, regrouped during the break, and then they backed off a little bit of the Kevin Harvick setup they had underneath the race car, and they hit on something. Right now, Stewart says the car is just a tick on the free side. He is fourth, five seconds off the lead. And let's take you back to 19th. Justin Allgaier, the 51, being hounded by 
fellow rookie Austin Dillon and last year's rookie of the year Ricky Stenhouse. Now these boys need to learn to play well together here because they're all young men and they're going to be around for a long time. So uh, that 51 car has been very impressive this weekend. Yeah I just saw Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in a 17 give Justin Algar in a 51 a bit of a shot at the end of the back straightaway getting off into turn three. That he did and Jeff Gordon is on a tear. He's caught Kurt Busch. This will be for sixth place. Gordon started 13th. Takes away the inside. But you said he gave him a shot. That, that's back in the day we called that the chrome horn. That's like, hey, dude, you're holding me up. <laughs> Get out of my way. I would say these drivers are starting to get a pretty good feel for where their race car is at because we're at lap 22, which is about a halfway through this fuel run. Jeff Gordon continues to impress. Uh, his next target will be this car, the two of Brad Keselowski. Steve? And Brad Keselowski, Mike, said that he was tight getting into turn one, but he also thinks that he was getting on the splitter going into turn one, but he said things have started to calm down a little bit in that two car. Well, and I think that's probably because they were on low air pressure to start the race because they know how much it's going to build over the course of a race. And, of course, when that splitter starts bottoming out, it'll make the front tires light, and it won't turn as good. That seems to be a common theme a lot of times at uh, these faster racetracks, that uh, some of the cars get on the splitter, and like you said, then, the, then your front tires are just basically feel like they're off the ground. Yeah. Well, Kevin Harvick is wasting no time. He has lapped up to 32nd place. Michael Annette and now goes after J.J. Yaley in the 44, who is in 31st. So before we get to the first pit stop, uh, Harvick is greatly trying to reduce the number of the cars on the lead lap. Krista? And really the only issue he's talked about so far, Mike, is being loose, loose on entry specifically. And he also talking about all of the guys, a lot of guys, especially due to the wind now he's led 25 laps all the first 25 last fall he led 138 laps here he led the first 44 and the final 36 laps en route to victory and then being a little loose in uh, uh, you just back the corner up a little bit you just don't charge the corner quite so hard back the corner up a little bit back off the throttle a little bit earlier than what you were and that that's not a bad thing because that'll make the car turn through the middle and come off good Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 88 car, he continues his march forward, but now he has his hands full of Greg Biffle in that 16 car. They're battling for the 13th spot. Yeah, Biffle started 10th, dropped back to 14th, trying to move back up, but now he's got Jimmy Johnson working him. And here's Johnson for 14th. Yeah, I definitely think, I just had mentioned a minute ago, we're halfway through the run. I think now Greg Biffle's car, his 16 car, is starting to go away just a little bit because he's been losing a few spots here of late. And Johnson can't complete the pass entering one, and Biffle gets the drive off turn two to hold the spot. You see those dark clouds to the north. Blue sky to Bye -bye, the west. Clouds. Kevin Harvick, your leader. Five Hour Energy 400 on Fox is sponsored by your next truck, Ford F-150. And by Sprint. Get a Sprint family plan for as low as $25 per month each. Visit a Sprint store today. Here's a closer look at today's race action with Sprint. Your leader is Kevin Harvick. He also has the fastest lap in the race. They qualified at 194, quickest lap 185 and a half. The new Sprint family plan gives up to 10 friends and family unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as little as 25 bucks each per month on the Sprint network. Sprint.com slash speed has the details. Harvick just put a lap on last week's winner, Denny Hamlin, on Paul Menard. So now just 25 cars remain on the lead lap. But the, the thing I like about this four car, look where he's running. He's moved the thing up the hill quite a bit, but he can go to the bottom. He can go to the bottom and pass him. He can go to the top and pass him. All he's got to do is catch him, and he goes right by him. We've been doing races Kevin's entire career. Did you just see that graphic while ago? 588 laps and counting that he's led this year. When you think back to most of his 25 wins, that's the reason we called him the closer. The Mr. Where did he come from? He would maybe only lead a lap or two at the end, but he is dominating races this year. 
Well, it's just it's just so reminiscent to me of looking back at Matt Kenseth last year. Matt Kenseth can't qualify. Heck, he went settled the pole several times. Matt Kenseth doesn't win that many races. He won the most races. And you look at the look look at the intensity of that driver. He's not batting an eye. I mean, he is on it. And it's, I mean, you'd you think it was the end of the race, not the beginning. And all around the garage, the talk is, what would Rodney Childers do? He is Harvick's new crew chief. He's the talk of that garage area. It's it's no one thing, Daryl, but it's a great combination they put together there at Stuart Haas. And boy, it's paying dividends. It really is. Great package. Jeff Gordon up to sixth. He is tenths behind Brad Keselowski. And Danica Patrick is closing up on Jamie McMurray, who is in eighth place. Matt? Mike, last fall before they were official teammates, Kevin Harvick spent over an hour with Danica Patrick just talking about her line, her entry and throttle points here at Kansas, and she really improved her lap times. Now, between practice sessions on Friday, they sat down again. Harvick looked at her dartfish, which is some computer technology that all the teams utilize to see their car on the racetrack and, and where they enter the corner and exit. Harvick showed her that she was not driving in the corner deep enough on the gas. She did that in the next practice session, and then in qualifying, she really showed what she could do, qualifying in the top 10. Just saw Paul Bernard on pit road. That's a little bit early. He pitted a lap 37, but I think his car was so far off. I mean, he just had to win a lap down back in 26, so they elected to go ahead and come to pit road. I'm seeing Ryan Blaney making his first career Sprint Cup Series start. Just got lapped, came to pit road as well. But, Mike, can you imagine what we would have given back in the day for that kind of information that we could lay over a throttle trace over some of braking, how you're braking, how you're gassing, how you're turning? When people were beating you, you had an opportunity to see how they were doing it. We didn't have that opportunity. No, it was an awesome. This time, this time before tires, Mike Smith getting on pit road, 3,900 to line. One and a half down. Steve. Well, Mike, Casey Kane says my balance has stayed the same. I'm loose getting into the corners, but my exits, they're pretty good. Krista. Jay Allmendinger coming in, him saying that his car is wicked loose. He said, as soon as I lift, that's when it wants to turn. I have no right rear grip, Matt. Jamie McMurray in the one car, much like his teammate, the 42 of Kyle Larson, he is just too free. Looking for an air pressure change on that. The four car Harvick on pit road, Kristen. Right, Matt, the fastest car bringing him down pit road. Freaky fast, if you will, the Jimmy John Chevrolet. And as we said, really the only issue for Kevin Harvick being loose on entry is crew chief Rodney Childers telling him he's 10 away. Don't look for many adjustments, just trying to give him a little bit more stability. Brent Biffle in and out, Danica Patrick in, here comes Clint Boyer, Matt. Danica Patrick said her car was a little bit free on entry, but not bad. Big Chuck White in this weekend for the gas man on the 10 machine. He tops it off, comes through the overflow, and he's the way. Joey Logano on pit road now. Kyle Busch, Tony Stewart, Matt Kenseth, and more. Kenseth is done. And Carl Edwards picks up the lead. Yeah, with as much as this pace slowed down, when Kevin Harvick hit pit road, Krista, the rest of them had to follow. That's right, Larry Mack. And here's Joey Logano with his pit stop, a small adjustment. He talked about being about a one tight in center, but also the wind is what's affecting Joey. Steve? Well, Krista, Dale Leonard Jr. said my car started tight everywhere, but it's now just tight in the middle. Four tires are fuel and an air pressure adjustment, Matt. Carl Edwards, he started fourth. Edwards said the car was neutral to a tick tight. Uh, They're adjusting that with air pressure. Great stop by the athletic guy. Jeff Gordon is the new leader. From Brad Keselowski, Eric Almirola, and Jimmy Johnson, along with Denny Hamlin and Ryan Truex. Those are the cars that have not yet been to pit road. And here's your leader. 42 years old, 20 years since his first victory, first of 88 wins in what's now the Sprint Cup Series. And what a season he's having, leading the points. Michael Annette speeding penalty on pit road. As Gordon reaches his pit box, Krista. Yep, Jeff Gordon in turn three and four. He said he's pretty good, but he's having trouble getting the throttle on turn two. Off of turn two, the exit, that's where they're making the adjustment to give him that ability to turn off of turn two. But really, three and four has been the problem turn for a lot of these teams. That's where Jeff Gordon's making up time. Eric Almirola, 
the Farmland Bacon Club Ford. Yes, you can join. Go to farmland.com. Waiting for Brad Keselowski and Jimmy Johnson. And Clint Boyer goes around. I don't think he hit anything. The car just started doing that swing and back and forth, and he couldn't catch it. And uh, that brings out a caution. Caution is out, and scoring shows Brad Keselowski on a lap by himself. Yeah, I think Brad Keselowski, they were about one or two laps away from pitting that two car. As we know, they can be sometimes the last driver to hit pit road. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 was on pit road when the caution came out. Let's see what happened to Boyer coming off turn two. Darryl. Heavy traffic right here. The, the the three car, the nine, whole bunch of them. I think the nine gets up. No, nah, the 15 just gets loose, kind of in the wake of the nine car there at Marcus Ambrose. And you see here the car just starts swagging the backs and forth. Everybody did an amazing job of staying off of him. The hood and roof flaps come up as the car turns tail to the wind. But what a job of keeping it off the wall. See right here, I think he gets in the wake of that nine car, the air, and it made his car get loose. And, of course, here he's just trying to hang on to it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Saved it. Now, Brad Keselowski, again, he has not made his stop yet. He will be on pit road more than likely by himself. Mike, I think we will see a record for wave around cars <laughs> when this caution, when we get one to go. It'll only be about 30 of them. <laughs> Look at Boyer. Keep it off the wall. And nice work by rookie Ryan Blaney and Ricky Stenhouse to miss him. We are under caution in Kansas. <laughs> 49 laps complete, work through the first caution for Clint Boyer's spin. And Kevin Harvick, who's led almost the whole race so far because Keselowski was the only car on the lead lap. Harvick is our Aaron's lucky dog. You don't need credit, all you need is Aaron's. So he will get to come around, and I, Larry, I think you're right. It's the first time in history the lucky dog car will start on the front row for the restart. Yeah, I, I, my question is, Krista, why did he come back to pit road, though? Well, Larry Mack, they had planned to stay out, but then Kevin came on the radio and said, Rodney, I think we need tires. I, I sort of have a vibration that I didn't tell you about before. So Rodney said, okay, nothing to gain, nothing to lose. Let's come in and get those four fresh tires. Well, let's, uh, let's watch him through the Clint Boyer spin. Well, you know what could have happened? I mean, here he is, and he's looking right at it. He could have gotten on the brakes. I don't, let's see if we see any smoke. Might have gotten on the brakes pretty hard and flat spotted a tire, and that may be where the vibration was coming from. So okay. not only did he get the lucky dog, he's a lucky dog. So let's explain now. The pace car has Brad Keselowski in tow, and we'll pick up Kevin Harvick. Everybody else is entitled, if they do not make a pit stop on the last lap, before we go green, before one to go, they can take the wave around. If they do not pit, and everyone in front of them has pitted, so these cars all get the wave around, all to get back on the lead lap, and the reason they got a lap down was they had all made pit stops before the caution for Boyer, except Brad Keselowski. Steve. Yeah, Mike, uh, to Larry's point, the two car absolutely was going to pit prior to the caution coming out. When he did come down pit road, Brad said, I'm just a little bit free through the middle and then on throttle. And he says, I'm having a hard time. I'm lacking speed getting off turn four. So they gave him four tires and they did make a small chassis adjustment to help that. So with the wave around, Steve, everybody gets back pretty much the way they were running before pit stops. Joey Logano will restart third, Carl Edwards fourth, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and others as Boyer returns to pit road. Let's look at uh, let's look at Clint Boyer again coming off turn two over there. Been a bit of a trouble area. Got on the outside of these cars. I'm sure I'm just positive that the wake off the nine and maybe the air off the two up there and head of him got him loose coming off the corner. But once these things start zigging and zagging the way the front ends are set on these cars with so much caster and the steering is so quick, it's almost impossible to keep from not having what happened happen. Swag and swaying back and forth. Clint Stad, an interested observer. Says, oh, I've seen the boy do that a million times. <laughs> yeah, Chris Boyer, he's at every track every week. But, you know, Kevin Harvick a few years ago talked about Jimmy Johnson's horseshoe. I, th I think I know where that horseshoe is. The, gold, the golden horseshoe? <laughs> I think, I think well. it has to. I mean, how many times will you make a green flag pit stop 
and get trapped by the caution and end up basically back in second even after making a second pit stop during the next caution. Yeah. I mean, that's... It's a little early to be <laughs> determined to decide that that's where the horseshoe is. Uh -oh. It's a little early. Uh, maybe they can just start polishing it, yeah. getting it ready. They All may right. have it down there in the toolbox. Pace cars in, Keselowski and Harvick on the front row. Green flag back in the air, completing lap 52. But you know, Mike, Larry and I were kind of kidding each other in the break there. The only person. Whoa, Kenseth. Oh, my God. He went way down on the apron, and then his elevator shot straight to the top, and he almost took out the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Wow. For the lead, Harvick is there. But Larry and I were talking, the only car or only person that can beat that four car tonight, we think, is that four car. They, the only people that can beat them are they can beat themselves. Because that thing is... Right now, Brad Keselowski is giving him all he can handle. Now, those three drivers behind Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick, Austin Dillon in the three, Marcus Ambrose in the nine, Matt Kenseth in the 20, they're trying to get back on the lead lap. Right now, they're one lap down. And that's why Kenseth was so urgent with that move to the front on the restart. Harvick back in command. It just seems like, Mike, that the, all the guys are complaining about turn three and the wind blowing them down the back. It's not, bother, it's not bothering that four car one bit. This will be the 44th lap that Harvick has led tonight. Now watch Matt Kenseth, who's really trying to make something happen on this restart so he can get back on the lead lap. Well, you can go down below the white line here. That's not out of bounds. We see that a lot here. He's trying to get under Austin Dillon right there. And, whoa, got his nose taken off. That was going to work as long as he was on the straightaway, but he was running out of straightaway. Yes, he was. Poor Ryan Blaney in the Penske number 12, starting his first cup race, loses his momentum and a lot of spots. Earlier, Jamie McMurray and Jeff Gordon battled for either sixth or seventh spot, and now they're going at it again for seventh after the restart. I just think about eight or ten laps into a run, that's where that 24 car of Jeff Gordon really comes to life. Yeah, we've just seen that so many times this year, time and time again, California... Darlington, you name it. Every time we go to a track like this, particularly bigger racetrack, that 24 has the best long run car in the field. And he addressed that, uh, Daryl, during the press conference Wednesday for the Coke 600. And he says, I don't know if we have a long run car or I'm just a long run driver, but it seems the more laps we run, the better we get. Yeah, I, that was my point there a bit ago. We call the car, we always say it's the car. Well, it's probably the car and the driver. They complement each other. I didn't see a lot out of Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car in that first run, but I think they got really aggressive with adjustments. He just drove by Carl Edwards in that 99 to take the third spot away. Let's go back to Johnson's teammate in 10th, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Steve? Well, Mike, there's a bit of concern in the 88 pitch. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, I think we have a loose lug nut. I feel a vibration. He said, if it gets worse, I'll, I will pit, but I'll stay put for right now. Wow. You know, that was a big topic on our conference call earlier in the week. The pressure, yeah, the pressure to perform on, on the racetrack, but the pressure to perform on pit road when you're trying to change four tires with five lug nuts apiece and dump 19 gallons of Snoko race fuel and doing it in less than 12 seconds. And, and, and just as a driver, when you say you have a vibration, how long, that's the thing, how long do I stay out here? How much, how far do I push it? before I go to pit road because it's not going to go away on its own most likely won't fix itself and it probably will only get worse and, 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 and Larry you know this you question yourself as a driver oh trouble off turn four one car three cars spinning together Landon Castles in it Ryan Truex and David Reagan way down into the grass goes the seven of Michael Annette Wow, man, that was vicious. And at lap 60, we have the second caution of the night. Truex and Reagan all torn up. Not much damage to Annette. And we'll have to look and see how this one started, but a lot of damage there to David Reagan. Oh, there's a bunch of cars that are destroyed here. The, that car right there, the 83 car. Ryan Truex walks away, he's okay. Reagan's car. 
the seven's got a lot of damage on the other on the right side. Yeah, Daryl, he was all down in the infield grass. You could just see the car bouncing up and down. Now here's Truex. Wow, look oh. at the look at the going uh, rotors on the 83 trying to get on the brakes and stay off of the 34. Yeah, David Reagan was already spinning. Ryan Truex was trying not to get there. You got it. He was standing on the brakes. Landing Castle. This is where Mike Lynette, the seven, goes all the way down through the grass. Oh boy, starts right and yep. then hooks. Yeah. Nowhere to go. So caution is out in Kansas for the second time tonight. 62 laps complete. It is not a full moon Saturday night, but it's a tough one for David Reagan, Ryan Truex. This is Landon Castle's car and Michael Annette. Now let's show you David Reagan here on the right side of the screen trying to run the low groove. Yeah, he gets down. I think he got his left wheels down on the on the flat right there. And you can see that and it kicks the car loose. And, and these cars have such quick steering in them now and so much caster in the front end. I know that's a little too technical, but once they start to get loose like that, they start that sway and you can't catch it. All right, here's what David Reagan said. Yeah, just got a little loose and then I was out of the throttle just trying to gather back up and what's his name just ran over me there. It wasn't, wasn't his fault. I was completely out of the throttle just, just trying to hold on. Well, tough break there for Truex and Annette now. Uh, pit road is open. Joey Logano leads a group including Tony Stewart, Jamie McMurray, Eric Almirola, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Casey Kane, and more. Matt? Tony Stewart hit pit road in the fifth position. They're going to go right side tires only and top him off with fuel for track position. Steve? And fuel only for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's already left. He said the vibration has calmed down a little bit. Fuel only on the 88. Krista? Joey Logano saying he's tight center, loose off. The adjustments they made before helping him turn a little bit on the racetrack. Kyle Larson waiting to get a full load of Sunoco race fuel. And off he goes. David Reagan spin. Collects Ryan Truex, Michael Annette, and Landon Castle. Ready for the restart at Kansas Speedway. Jeff Hammond with a weather update. Yeah, Mike, on the top of the Hollywood Hotel, and you can see our little weather vane right here. Kind of measures the airspeed and gives us a pretty good idea how much it's decreased since the start of the race. 15 to 20 mile an hour gusts have now dropped down to about five miles an hour. Pretty steady going across as far as west to east. Looks pretty good so far as far as the weather's concerned, as well as the wind here at Kansas. What I like is all that blue sky over your shoulder, Jeff, uh, off to the west. Hammond had a hat like that one time. 65 laps. <laughs> Harvick has led all but 10 of them. <laughs> that was cold. <laughs> but it was funny. He loves it. <laughs> Mike, our top six drivers, they stayed out that time, which would include Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Jimmy Johnson, Carl Edwards, and Jeff Gordon. Green flag back in the air. And Johnson to the bottom. Three wide, four wide. Here we go into the corner. Edwards tracks in line, and very quickly, they just funnel down into that turn. And yeah. how about Jeff Gordon in that 24 car? There was nothing weak about that restart. No, and, but, you know, Kazaski did a nice job of giving Jimmy Johnson a 48 some room there. But he wanted that outside, that high line, and that paid off for him. 6nd file back through seventh. Triple wide, and, boy, they just swarmed around Dale Earnhardt Jr. and left him. He lost about four spots right there. I tell you, when they come down this front straightaway and fan out onto that apron and come back up on the racetrack, you wonder how in the world are they going to make it? But somehow they figure it out. Kurt Busch in that 41, he just threads the needle between his brother Kyle Busch in the 18 and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 right up through the middle. Boy, the Whoa. racing on restarts is wild. Whoa, a little tight back in here, boy. A little tight. Whoa. Kyle Busch went way downstairs, not wanting any part of that. And you see Brian Vickers in the 55, as well as Justin Algar in the 51. Both those drivers on the lead lap right now. 
and racing hard, I might say. There goes Jeff Gordon into fourth place. Behind him, the race for seven. Casey, or not a race for seven. Casey Kane there side by side with Denny Hamlin. That is for seventh. And uh, look at this. Moments ago, as Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, got on, loose, everybody came around to take advantage of him. Boy, look how much it cost him, too. He had yep. to get out of the throttle that just that little bit, and here goes six, eight cars by him. Now, the free pass car on that caution was Austin Dillon, but here is Denny Hamlin, who used to wave around to get himself back on the lead lap, and he is currently ninth. Heck, he got, he got lapped. Ke yep. uh, Kevin Harvick lapped him before the caution started to fly, but it all oh, around he goes. Jamie McMurray was catching up to him, and Hamlin just spins. Yeah, he was well up off the corner when that happened. Yeah, he was. But you know what I love about this track? Look what happened back. It's all paved, no grass. Car spin. They're able to catch the thing, say the thing, crank it up, and get going again. The racing surface here on the back straightaway, 70 feet wide. That's wider than Talladega on the back stretch, I believe. I just like, look how it's yep. paved all the way down that back straightaway. So when things like that happen. Lose, from you, those kind of speeds. Yeah, this racetrack, Daryl, the racing part of it down to the white line is 20 feet wider than Talladega. So plenty of room to work with. We've seen a couple of guys, Clint Boyer, and, and now we've seen Denny Hamlin both spin back there and be able to crank up and go. Jamie Mack was right up to the bumper of Hamlin when this happened. Well, she's gone. Just lost rear grip. Boy, that looked like days of thunder right there because McMurray's view was completely blocked by tire smoke. A lot of the guys were telling me that this tire is a little bit unpredictable at times. Uh, like it's almost, it's on the hard side, it's on the conservative side, and you'll be going, 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 and you'll lose grip like that. And a nice save by Hamlin. Those flaps that come up on the roof and on the hood, they are designed to stall the air so that that car does not get air under it and get airborne. This is not the caution that Jimmy Johnson and that 48 team wanted to see because, Matt, they had been out there for a long time since their last stop. Adjustments across the back. Jimmy said that he needed to float the car in the center. If you rush it, it would bind the car up to Steve. That last time the 88 came in and took fuel only. They've made a chassis adjustment on that car. They're also going to give Dale Earnhardt Jr. four tires. Krista. Kurt Busch in again. He was also in just a few laps ago, but he has been loose, bad loose the entire race, continuing to make adjustments to try to tighten him up. Paul Menard is the free pass car. You see him uh, lower right on pit road. He'll get back on the lead lap, so we'll restart with 22 cars on the lead lap once pit stops are completed. So Jimmy Johnson is the first off pit road from 17th on back. Lead lap drivers made pit stops. Welcome to our sales event. We hear you have great deals. Yes, but they're going fast. Toyotas are safe and reliable. R-E-L-I-A-B-L-E. -E. And loaded with technology. T-E-C-H-N-O-L-O-G-Y. Finals are tonight. I was in a spelling bee once. Spell expeditious. Well, I didn't win it. <laughs> During Toyota time, get 0% APR financing for 60 months on a 2014 Prius. Offer ends June 2nd. For more great deals, visit toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Under caution at 72 laps at Kansas Speedway. Kevin Harvick, the leader. Let's take a look at the Toyota top performers of our race so far. Kyle Busch in 13th, started 24th. Brian Vickers just behind him, and Denny Hamlin, who spun to bring out this caution. Cole Witt and Matt Kenseth. I was watching the 48 pit stop. This may or may not be a, 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 an issue, but but watch watch right here out the tailpipe when they drop when he revs the engine up to go. Get a big puff of black smoke. Now these fuel injected engines. They normally don't do that. So I, I don't know if that means anything or not, but that's unusual. Yeah, we don't see that very often at all. No, these things are so efficient with the fuel injection, the ECU unit, that uh, we just don't see a lot of black smoke coming out the pipes like that. 
So Denny Hamlin is still on the lead lap last week's winner. Only twice this year has a winner finished the next race inside the top 10. That makes me dizzy right there. Holy smoke. 73 complete. Hamlin catching up to the field. It's Joe Nemechek. who was a couple of laps down. And we're ready for the restart as night descends on Kansas Speedway. Kansas City lights and the Toyota SUV pulls to pit road. Green flag Kevin Harvick Brad Keselowski even with him. Carl Edwards right there Jeff Gordon closing. Gordon's got a good run but he's going to track Keselowski off into the corner. Yeah, that, and this is an orderly two by two restart. That was smart. This is an orderly two by two restart. That was smart on the Jeff Gordon part. He could have dove down on that flat on the apron, but it probably would have put the two car in harm's way, and he'd elected not to. Now, when I look at Carl Edwards in the 99 and Jeff Gordon in the 24, they have not made a pit stop since their green flag stops. So they only have about 20 laps that they can go, and that's utilizing all these cautions we've had that they'll have to make a green flag stop. Gordon to the inside on Keselowski. I think the way these guys are racing, Larry, off their apron here on the front straightaway down into turn one, they might get a caution here pretty quick because it's sure crazy looking going off into turn one. 15 yellow flags in last year's race. Joey Logano in that 22 trying to take that fourth spot away from his teammate Brad Keselowski, and he'll complete the pass. And behind him, Tony Stewart picks up a spot. Stewart moving forward. At the expense of Casey Kane, who drops to seven. Yeah, Kane was up there, uh, Mike, and he was coming off turn four, and the car snapped out from under him. He almost lost it, lost a few spots, but he did uh, re regain control. Let's go to Kane's pit and Steve. Well, Mike, the good news is he started 17th. He's up to seventh. He pitted on lap 62. They took fuel only. He says overall the car feels great. Yeah, and he was also one of the first drivers to make that green flag stop, so he got the lap down, took the free pass, and they definitely are going in the right direction with his five car. Larry, one thing, I, one thing, boy, look at Dale Jr. go. One thing, that Larry, I think's happening as the sun has gone down, the track's cooled off. Remember the guys were talking about the track loosens up, and I'm seeing a lot of these cars getting snappy loose as this track goes through this transition from the afternoon to the evening. And Darrell, not only is it loosening up, it's getting faster. About every driver, they've run their fastest lap within the last five to ten laps. Second place, Jeff Gordon came off that turn like he was shot out of a cannon. Boy, I saw Last say. pass, Carl Edwards. Carl just gave him that spot. He said, man, you're, you're bad fast right now. Go ahead. See if you can do anything with that four car while you're at it. And Gordon is now just three quarters of a second behind Kevin Harvick. After starting this race 13. That 24 car. He is. I think he may be a match for the four. They run it. They're running identical lines right around the bottom on the white line. I know we still have a long way to go, but Danica Patrick in this 10 car. This may be the best run I've seen her have. She just took that position away from her teammate from last year, Ryan Newman, in that 31. She's up to the ninth position. Some pretty serious racing going all the way around the racetrack right now. The 41 and the 48. They were mixing up here a little bit off turn two. Up, 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 up. That 41's getting sucked up to the right, uh, left rear of the 48. And, ah, they just barely cleared each other. <laughs> That's all happening at about 180 miles an hour up off that corner. Yeah, that slow motion doesn't do it justice. No, does it? Uh -uh. you can see see Kurt fighting the wheel there, and he's getting loose trying to stay off the 48. He's able to hang on to it. I just been seeing this more and more and more. These cars are getting a little snappy loose. A lot of them are. Kyle Larson makes the move on Brian Vickers and moves up to 15. He made a couple of stops under that last caution flag, Matt. Mike, the car was free on the first run, and then it just continued to get worse and worse. So 
they utilized that caution. Chris Hero, his crew chief, had the guys change the camber, made an adjustment in that right front to try to help tighten this race car up. We talked about aggressive adjustments at the top of the show. That's pretty aggressive right there. That takes a little time to do. Kevin Harvick has now led 71 laps in the five-hour Energy 400, benefiting Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Five Hour Energy 400 on Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. And by KFC. So many ways to KFC. How do you, KFC? Kevin Harvick leading at 89 laps. Uh, let's take a KFC social media pit stop. J H E H off four. And there's a couple of uh, happy campers getting ready for the race. Like they've been riding their bicycles or their skateboards or something, got on their helmets. Having a big time. Speaking of four, that's Kevin Harvick's number. And he has led 79 of the 90 laps thus far. But Jeff Gordon edges ever closer. Uh, slightly. Yeah, it, it's almost like Harv keeps an eye on him. He closes in a little bit, and then Kevin seems to pick it up a little bit. They've been kind of cat and mouse backs and forth here. I still think Harvick's got the, obviously got the better car, and I believe he's just kind of keeping Jeff Gordon at bay. And again, Jeff Gordon will have to make a green flag pit stop probably within the next eight to nine laps. Is that what you're hearing, Krista? Right around lap 100 is their plan. Uh, Rodney Childers has told Kevin Harvick he can make it as far as 101. But one of the things to keep your eye on on Jeff Gordon, not only Larry Mack, do they have speed, they have efficiency. The problem with Jeff Gordon's car early in the race, he said, back in the throttle off of turn two. By lap 70, his spotter Eddie DeHaan said, guess what, Jeff? Guess where you're good? Getting off of turn two. The adjustments have been working. Thanks, Krista. And here's a battle for 12th place between two rookies. Kyle Larson, Justin Allgaier, both in Chevrolets. Allgaier showed a lot of speed in practice yesterday. Mike, one reason the cars are better off two into three, the wind. The wind is really, really settled down. We don't have a lot of wind now. I think it's not affecting the cars off turn two and pushing them down to back into turn three. I think that's not a player now. But Mike, we've seen Kyle Larson in that 42 car up front a lot this year, but this is so good to see Justin Allgaier in that 51. He only has one top 20 finish this year, and that was 17th at Bristol. Tell you what, I'm betting on I'm betting on that little 51 car. I tell you what, that Steve Addington, that whole crowd, they're gonna they're gonna be a player. They they may not win a race, but they're getting better and better every week. Single car team last year owned by James Fitch, longtime car owner in the sport. Sold out to Harry Scott this year. They occasionally will run a second car, but they had their choice of some veterans and tapped Justin Allgaier to move up from the nationwide series. I know we have a lot of drivers that are late 30s, early 40s, but we got a we got a great group of young men that are going to fill their shoes as time goes by. And this is one of them right here, Justin Allgaier. Kevin Harvick has now opened it up on Jeff Gordon. Last time we checked, it was seven tenths of a second. Now the lead stands at 1.2. We had one driver, we had several drivers that decided to come to pit road on that last caution at lap 70. They pitted at lap 72. One of them was Jimmy Johnson in this 48 car. He was running in the top five. Since he made that stop, he's really not made up a lot of ground. He's still sitting back in the 17th spot. So he's only made up two or three positions since that restart. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Danica Patrick, ninth place. Patrick closed on Earnhardt, then backed off a bit as they close on Jamie McMurray and traffic. I think one place that Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car is so strong, we've been talking about getting off the corner. He gets off the corner good, and that helps his straightaway speed so much. It's sort of Dale Jr.'s style. He's not known to charge the corner. He's more of a guy that kind of backs off a little early but when he gets in the gas he does get that good momentum up off the turn because he comes off wide open and he runs up high to get off the corner and that just keeps the momentum even more and he loves to run high when the grips there and the grooves there he likes that groove he's in right now saw a beautiful sunset sky there over turn number two looking back from Jamie McMurray in eighth at Dale Earnhardt Jr. ninth and Danica Patrick 10th.
We're closing in on lap 100, and we have four drivers. We've already talked about them, but Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, especially Jeff Gordon and Carl Edwards, green flag stops pretty soon. Watch it. That's, that's what I was telling you. That's the way Dale Jr. runs the racetrack. He, got, he gets off the gas early. You saw Danica really close getting into the corner. So she's driving into the corner a lot deeper than Dale Jr. is. But then he gets off the corner. He's back in the gas. While she's trying to recover from overdriving the corner, he's back in the gas and pulling away. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. is up to the eighth spot after starting this race in the 22nd position. The thing about that four car, Larry just put a lap on Denny Hamlin again, 24 on pit road. That four car, he can pass anywhere he catches it. He high, low, it doesn't matter to him. Scheduled stop under green for Jeff Gordon. Harvick, Edwards, and Keslowski will have to come in soon. Krista. As Jeff Gordon brings his Chevrolet to his pit stall, he's been a little bit free and then a little tight in four. He said he needs just a slight adjustment uh, on the left rear is where they're going to make that with air pressure. You see it's a four-tire change, and Kansas is definitely a Jeff Gordon-style track. That seemed a little long on that stop. Uh, maybe they're sitting there getting it full of fuel, maybe, Larry, because seemed a little long on the left side. I saw something interesting there. The... Uh Tire changer pulls the tire off the right rear, hands it to the jack man, hands it to someone at the front of the car. They carry it around the front instead of around the back. These teams continue <laughs> to try to find things and do things differently to speed their stops up. Now you're seeing Kevin Harvick in the four make his green flag pit stop here at lap 101. I, I, and, and that makes sense, Larry. The 24 comes in. He's the closest thing to you. You can't stay out on old tires. Come to pit road. Carl Edwards, your new leader from Joey Logano. Let's go back to Krista. And Mike, like I said, Rodney Childers had told Kevin Harvick that 101 was about their max. That was where they planned on coming in under green flag conditions. And that vibration they had earlier in the race, they did find that it was a tire out of balance. You see the crew working on the right side. The plan is for four tires on the four of Kevin Harvick as the crew works around and makes the four tire change. Matt? 99 and Carl Edwards, he hits pit road, pulls into his box, comes to a stop. Now look for the tire carrier. He put the wrench in the back window. They're going to make an adjustment on the track bar. Going to go up. Was Justin noticed that the carrier trying to free up this 99 machine? Carl said it just was too tight to the center of the corner. On the left of your screen for the lead, Brad Keselowski, Casey Kane. Excuse me for second place. Joey Logano is the leader, and he's one second ahead of this pair. Kozlowski has to stop. Logano and Kane do not. And we felt like with the season that Casey Kane has had in that five car, he's been up, he's been down. His best finish is eighth place three times. Looking at this next month of racing here in Charlotte, Pocono, Dover, that was going to tell us a lot is the five car and Casey Kane gaining on things. How about Joey Logano leading laps in six straight races? A career high for this young man. And what a season he's having. One of only two drivers on the tour with two victories thus far. You know, I, I, I watched the four car pit stop. And Larry, I don't know, it just seemed unusual to me. The, the stop is good. There are no issues. They're getting the tires on, getting the tires. They took a tear off off the windshield, get a better view. I watched when they do the left side. Larry, the car does a little something that's a little odd to me. Watch when they drop the jack. Man, that thing just bam, 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 like a ball. It, it, and of course, remember, these things are riding right on the ground. And, and Darrell, we've been talking to a lot of drivers, a lot of crew chiefs. Everybody has a different approach. But I know you guys in the pre-race, you were down there at the four car. And Mike, no. you could not even stick no. your finger underneath that front splitter of that race car. They could use them for track sweepers. I'm telling you. <laughs> down on what the you call them, an anteater? An anteater. <laughs> it's unbelievable how low they are. And I saw on Harvick stop, the same as with Jeff Gordon. The right rear tire gets passed by the jack man to the tire carrier who one man carries both tires around the front of the car. And a lot of times the reason they're doing that is to free up that other carrier to make the adjustments in the rear window. There's a lot that happens down there in about 12, 13 seconds. That's all I know. Sure is. Comes a two car, I think it is on the pit road, Kieslowski. 
and he was last in at lap 48 so that is 60 laps some of them caution for the worth forward of Roger Penske while his teammate Joey Logano leads Steve and Brad's quote is the car has neutraled out he said but where I really need help Paul speaking of Paul Wolf the crew chief I need the back to be more stable I need the rear of the car to be more stable four tires they are making a chassis adjustment for Keselowski He's away. Now there's two of the three Penske cars. We'll explain in a minute as A.J. Allmendinger makes his stop for four tires and Mike. fuel, and Austin Dillon comes in. Just banking on the two car. Remember how he got everybody a lap? Oh, spinner off turn four here. Way down through the grass comes Ambrose. And caution is out. Wow. Marcus Ambrose gets it straightened out, and he is headed. For pit road. He was running 180 miles an hour, looked like, when he got into the grass right there off turn four. And that's going to catch several drivers a lap down, Mike, with that caution coming out right there somewhat in the middle of green flag pit stops. Kind of surprisingly, it did not look like he bent up the splitter on the front of that car. That thing was, I mean, it was plain and it, it, it yeah. never dug in. It was just plain and across the ground. Now, he was in 28th, one lap down in the Stanley Ford. Got a little re rear damage there. He's the third car in line, and around it goes. She just, around she goes. And, and again, I just make a note. I've seen this time and time again. A lot of cars have just gotten that snappy loose like that, and that's what happened to him. Now, there's why the splitter was undamaged. Most of that spin <laughs> was sideways, and he was down to a fairly low speed by the time the front of that car faced the grass. Mike, all of the drivers that just had made those green flag pit stops like Kevin Harvick, like Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, as well as Brad Keselowski, they're a lap down right now. Jeff Hammond? Mike, we were right here right outside of turn four, and we believe, just watching it, that maybe there's a little bit of indecision whether to come on the pit road or not. By the number nine car, the car just stepped out on him. It got away from him. He did a good job of not allowing the car to come out, hit the outside wall, and go down through the grass. But these guys are hauling the mail coming into turn four, getting on the pit road during this, this round of pit stops. I don't know about that, Jeff. He was way off of turn four. I, I, I'm not sure. He, he may have thought about it, and if he did, it was not a good decision for sure. He's there now, and the grass here at Kansas Speedway is pretty close cropped. Now, that's why you don't see a whole lot of it falling out from underneath that number nine, right? No, I think he really came out of that pretty in pretty good shape, yes. considering how fast he was going. Now, we anticipate that everyone else on the lead lap that's not pitted, they will be on pit road for four tires and full of Sunoco race fuel. Those four that did just pitted should take that wave around. And now I know where that horse is. I just going to say that, Mike. Who got the free pass? The four car. Yes. One Kevin. more time. <laughs> but that's right. When you have a fast car and you're running up front, good things happen. <laughs> NASCAR Race Up catches you up on everything on the world of NASCAR, and now it has a new permanent time. 5 p.m. Eastern time on weekdays is where you can get caught up on everything in the world of NASCAR. It's NASCAR Race Up, new time starting Monday on Fox Sports 1 and streaming on Fox Sports Go. Harvick in 19th will get the free pass. So pit road is open for the lead lap cars ahead of him. Matt? Tony Stewart, a two-time Kansas winner, telling his team, I need to work more on the center of the corner. We're too tight. That's where I'm losing my time. Making an air pressure change. They're going to go for four tires and a track bar adjustment. Steve on the 14. Matt Casey Kane said it's not bad. They discussed maybe a two-tire change, but they're going for four. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, my car's a little edgy in and off, but don't over-adjust. It's great on the long run. Krista. See, Joey Logano a little off sequence because they came in on lap 63 for fuel only. But he said he found something he liked, clean air. He was too loose in traffic, but being out front like he had been these last few laps, finally tightened up the car. Well, this puts everyone on the same pit stop sequence, but... Dale Earnhardt Jr. took on only two tires. 48 Most as well. Of the other leaders got four. 48 two. Five hour energy 400 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by the new Samsung Galaxy S5. The next big thing is here.
finishing up the caution at 114 laps. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the leader. Here's a closer look at tonight's race with Sprint. He is also the biggest mover starting 22nd and now leading this race. The Sprint family plan gives up to 10 of your friends and family and limited talk text and a gig of data for as little as 25 bucks a month each on the Sprint network. Visit a Sprint store. Start your family today. Well, Kyle Busch has said this is his worst track. It's the only track where he doesn't have a top five finish. And it's not all bad luck. He made a little bit of his own luck here as he gets gigged for speeding on pit road. Oh, in dark. section four of the pit lane, which was in the segment just beyond where he's actually pitting. He's pitting in pit th 34. And then just beyond that is where he uh, was busted for speed. Now you're looking down the back straight away from turn three. The outside the track lights have gone out. However, along the inside of the back straightaway, there is still plenty of light coming from the lights around the end from the inside wall. And those lights are specially aimed so as not to create glare for the drivers. Right now, NASCAR polling the drivers over the radio, in car radios to see if the track is bright enough to go back to green flag racing without those lights along the outside of the backstretch. While uh, they take that poll, we remain under caution and we'll go down to Matt Yoakum for tonight's Subway Fresh Take. Mike, on that last pit stop, a lug hung on one of the studs causing them to lose Danica Patrick's team. That is six spots uh, when the cars went back out on the pit road. But that's really been the only hiccup tonight, Tony Gibson. The car, very impressive. Yeah, it's been, uh, the, you know, the GoDaddy Chevy has been really fast uh, all weekend long. And uh, she's done a hell of a job. I'm real proud of her. She uh, run up top ten all night long. We had a lug nut hang up right there. And uh, nobody's fault, just one of those deals. We lost a few spots. but. We've been able to pass cars all night, so that's a good thing. So uh, Stuart Haas Racing has been pretty stout all weekend. So uh, proud of everybody back at the shop for building great race cars and uh, making our company look good. So uh, I want to say hey to my mom and my wife. Happy Mother's Day to everybody and all the mothers out there. But uh, love you guys, and hopefully we can get a top five out of tonight. I second that. I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to my mom, too. And Mike, as a matter of fact, when they told Danica what happened, she said, no worries. We've been passing cars all night. We'll make it out. <laughs> she uh, didn't lose many spots there, Matt. She's 11 right now. There are 21 cars on the lead lap. This is what the backstretch looks with the lights on from the outside and with them out. Well, it happened just under this caution right here. But we're going to get one to go. Again, NASCAR polling the drivers and have learned that the backstretch is bright enough to go racing. Kyle Busch serving. A speeding penalty. And we listened in on Jimmy Johnson and his team. Don't have a clutch. I have no clutch. Push me. Push me. We're going to have to push them. Go, 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 go. Clear. Oh, boy. Daryl, in and out of the pits is where that's going to be a real problem, isn't it? It really is. I mean, you heard him say, you've got to push me. Uh, you got to. Yeah, you, I don't know what he did. I didn't. We didn't have the in car, maybe. But you got to put it in high gear and push it off using the starters. Normally, what you would do if the clutch is shot. Because Daryl, the way these transmissions are now, once you get going, like oh, even yeah. on a restart, they don't even use the clutch anymore. No, sir. Just when you come, you know, in and out of the pits, it could be a problem. And these clutch systems, they're actually hydraulic clutch systems, so a little hard to diagnose what might be going on there. Yep. You know, I remember something like this happening at, at short tracks uh, around America where you lose a bank of the lights at the backstretch. They'd have all the campers on the backstretch turn their headlights on yep. uh, to be able to complete the race. But that won't be necessary. The drivers say we're we're good to go. Chevrolet and its dealers are proud to support Military Appreciation Month with the best military purchase program for all who have served. Learn more at Chevy Salutes. Com. Mike, uh, Benny Parsons, I ran a tire test at Talladega with the safety truck sitting on the inside of the track, shooting the lights up on the track, a lot like what we got here, so we could finish a tire test at 200 miles an hour. Four wave arounds, Jeff Gordon and Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski get back on the lead lap. A.J. Allmendinger also takes a wave around to get back to one lap down. 
Now this is turn two where the track is brightly lit from the inside and the outside. That's one of the big differences in racing in the day and the night. The track has a whole different perspective from the daytime to the nighttime. The lights change everything. The way the track looks to you as a driver when you're driving the car. Boy, that's pretty dark right there. Yes. <laughs> Very. But the drivers and teams have been polled. They said we're good to go. We need to send Hammond over and see what the problem is. Maybe he was there. <laughs> That'd be too. the problem. That too. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Ready to restart and complete lap 118. That'll be 149 to go. Here in Kansas is Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his Hendrick Chevrolet teammate Casey Kane. Lead Joey Logano, Tony Stewart. Jimmy Johnson and Jamie McMurray back to the green flag. Well, Dale Jr. took off, got a nice start there. Dropped right down in front of the field, and away he goes. Got plenty of vision to right about here. It's a little darker than that back straightaway. Now, he and his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, in that 48 changed just right side tires. They had about 30-something laps on those left sides. Would you call this maybe a little experiment right now, Larry? At this point of the race, see what it's going to do, how it's going to work. Good time to try it. Might be a good time. Twenty-two cars on the lead lap. Martin Truex right now. The first car one lap down, along with Matt Kenseth, Ricky Stenhouse, and about five more. See a lot more sparks when the lights are not up so bright. I just saw a car that was in front of Kevin Harvick there, red car. Man, he was flaming going down into turn one. Kyle Larson, Kurt Busch in the 41, Eric Almirola, and Justin Allgaier left to right. And they're fighting for 11th place. I remember Kevin Harvick got the free pass after leading 90 laps tonight. He's trying to spite his way back up from the back. He is 18th right now. And Jeff Hammond can give us the spotter's perspective on that dimly lit back straightaway. Mike, fortunately for the spotters up here, it's not really affecting them that bad. You can actually see from our angle that even though it's a little bit dimmer, they still can actually do their job without any kind of problem at all. As we got a big battle up front here between the 22 and the 88. Got yeah, Joey Logano sweeps underneath. Earnhardt takes the lead going off into turn number one. And Dale's got a run off two and lifts. Oh, yeah, he, he got yeah. pushing up the hill there and had to get out of the throttle. And that opened the bottom up. Pretty easy pass for Logano. Logano won Texas another mile and a half, and his teammate Brad Kazowski won Vegas. So these Penske Fords are pretty tough tonight. A couple other contenders back in the pack as we look at Eric Almarola taking 11th away from Kurt Busch. Jeff Gordon back in 19th and Carl Edwards 20th trying to follow Harvick up through. Good luck with that. Yeah. So many drivers in the top 10 right now that we normally don't talk about them being inside the top 10. Like the fact of Casey Kane in 2014, McMurray, Stewart, Brian Vickers, Kyle Larson, Danica Patrick in 10th right now. That's not names we've talked a lot about in no. 2014 being up there. Yeah, even the 51 of Algar, he's 13th. When Logano made that move and Earnhardt shot up the hill off turn two, remember, he only got two tires on that stop. Yeah, yeah, a little, maybe lacking a little bit of grip. As did Brian Vickers uh, getting two tires on that last caution flight. Well, like Larry and I were saying, I, probably if you're going to try two tires, it's not a bad time to see what you got, see, have, see how you stack up against the competition with four tires. Might be something you want to pull here at the end of the night. Now Casey Mears in the 13 is a lap down as Jeff Gordon goes by. These cautions have really, and these cautions coming right in the middle of pit stops have really jumbled up the running order. Yeah, the timing has just been all wrong. I mean, even though the four cars gotten a couple of lucky dogs, he's mired back in traffic right now. He's making some good progress, but 
Got his work cut out for him. I think Dale Earnhardt Jr. will have his work cut out for him for his teammate, Casey Kane, in that five. I've been watching the scoring monitor, and Casey Kane is a little bit quicker than Dale Earnhardt Jr. You can see him close right there. Steve? And here's the reason, Mike. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just said, I'm going straight into turn three. I can't get it to rotate at all. Well, you know, I said, remember when I told you the wind had died down? Well, guess what? The wind has picked back up again. I noticed the flags. There's really a tailwind going down the back going into turn three. It have a big effect on these cars. Coming up, our Liberty Mutual mid-race report. NASCAR on Fox continues after these messages and a word from your Fox station. Time for the NASCAR on Fox mid-race report from Kansas Speedway, brought to you by Liberty Mutual. And Joey Logano is your leader, a two-time winner this year, and he's leading now in his sixth consecutive race, a career best. After a 35-minute weather delay to start the race, a bank of lights going out during the race. Pole sitter Kevin Harvick has dominated the first half. In this, the 11th race of the year, Darrell, Harvick has already amassed the second most laps he's led for an entire season. So I imagine that's who you're keeping an eye on. Uh, yeah, it is, Chris. Uh, you know, he's started on the pole. He dominated the first part of the race. He's gotten two lucky dogs. He's mired back in a little bit of the traffic right now. But watch that four car at the end of the night go into victory circle for his third win of the year. DW, I like Casey Kane. I love the way he runs the high side. Right now, he's got his car working down on the bottom. He's been a little bit free all night long. The last three laps, the fastest car on the track. I love Casey Kane in this race, especially to close strong. Larry Mack, what are you thinking? Michael, earlier this week, Jeff Gordon celebrated the 20th anniversary of that very first win at Charlotte Motor Speedway in 1994. He appears to be the only driver that can keep hit Kevin Harvick in sight. I think tonight might be about win number 89. Larry Mack, the 42 driver, Kyle Larson. This young rookie continues to impress. At one point out of the top 20, the team called an auto and made a significant adjustment in the front of the race car. They've dialed him back in. He's up to 10th. Remember, he had a great run at Texas, his best mile and a half finish, and he almost won the race at Auto Club Speedway. Keep an eye on the 42. Tonight's race is a home game for three drivers, one of whom, Joplin, Missouri's Jamie McMurray, currently fifth. Last spring, he tied his best Kansas finish of seven. Both Canassi cars running well here. You want to see nice guys finish up there? Keep an eye on Jamie Mack. And Mike Danica Patrick trying for her best finish of the year just moments ago, moving into ninth. She's been running in the top ten throughout the late afternoon and evening. Last year's winner, Matt Kenseth, lacking speed in his Toyota, went a lap down. Last week's winner, Denny Hamlin of Joe Gibbs Racing, spun out, fell out of the top ten. And, of course, Kyle was continuing his struggles here, the last car on the lead lap. This has been your NASCAR on Fox mid-race report. We are live at Kansas Motor Speedway. We'll have more with Logano leading Kane and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Five Hour Energy 400 on Fox is sponsored by Godzilla in theaters everywhere, May 16th. 144 laps to go. Everybody up high on the roof, our chief spotter Kevin Clark and our camera guys giving you great pictures uh, from Kansas Speedway here. Casey Kane leading Joey Logano by nine tenths of a second. Your Husqvarna high performance drivers. These are the drivers who have been to victory lane this season. Kevin Harvick and Joey Logano twice. Eight of them. That's half of the 16 driver chase grid that will contest the Sprint Cup. Later this season, as Casey Kane continues to extend his lead through the darkness of the back straightaway and back into the light, Kansas City Lights was a Steve Warner song. Krista. Well, Mike, not only are the lights important, but so is the track position. Clean air is crucial. How much so? Kevin Harvick, who dominated this race early, said he is now terrible in dirty air. So loose he can hardly drive it. Meanwhile, when Joey Logano was out front, he said, this clean air is so good, I can drive my car harder. Yeah, and then I've been noticing that with Harvey. I mean, he restarted in 18th, and he has not... I don't think he's passed anybody. He's been running no. 18th forever. Correct. Well, throw in also Jeff Gordon and Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. They restarted back there with him, and they are all running between 17th and 21st right now. And they all will need to make green flag pit stop before that long, before long from now. So staying on the lead lap could be difficult for Gordon Edwards and Keselowski. 
Now Brad only lacks about four laps to the rest of the leaders on pit stops as Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes second away from Joey Logano. Uh, but Jeff Gordon was in 12 laps before the rest of the leaders and Carl Edwards nine. Looks like those two tires are coming back around there. Yeah. Well and add to that Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car running fifth right now. He too went with just right side. Yeah, they look like they might be uh, you know maybe they're a disadvantage there for a little while but look like they're coming back around. Along with the uh, ninth place Brian Vickers. Yeah a lot of that disadvantage could be the differential in the air pressure when you first put them on this deep into a run the air pressures somewhat equal out. Equalize yeah. Kyle Busch, that 18 car, just fighting to try to stay on the lead lap right now back in the 22nd position. And that's the consequence of a speeding penalty leaving his pit uh, under caution. Getting caught by the electronic timing system. Well, I know it's not good. And here's Danica Patrick. She just goes around a 31 car of Newman to move her into. No, I guess they were battling for position there. And that put Danica up to seventh. What a run for her tonight. Gosh, this is by far and away. Oh, trouble down here, turn four. Caution is out. A flame is Jamie McMurray after a hard hit with the right front. Oh, you can see Jamie unhooking. He's getting ready to, he's trying to get down here to uh, where his pit crew is. He was fourth, Daryl, having a great drive. And now that car is up in flames and smoke. Finally, it comes to a halt, and the crewmen, his crew, rush to his aid to help him out of there. What a heartbreaker. Yeah, really. Looks like the car just shot up the hill into the wall. Get another look at it and see exactly what happened there. Well, let's ride along. This won't be fun. Oh, he's going down the back, hit it into turn three. Oh my gosh, it never, never turned. Which is normally the sign that a right front tire is going Definitely down. a right front right, tire. Down. You all right? Yeah. I mean, he never even got out of the gas. And he's getting down and getting his belts unbuckled as he looks for traffic behind him. And all he sees is sparks flying off the back of the car and now flames. You know, we were talking about, we saw this at Richmond, some of the car, cars catching on fire. We see it here tonight. The flames, the, all that is, the driver is protected. The firewall and everything around him is sealed up tight so that that flames can't come in a car with him. We see this most out the rear. But the thing that the drivers fear the most and that bothers, that, that gets to them the most is the smoke. All the smoke that comes inside the car. And that's really what, that's what they really uh, battle when they're trying to get out of there. Now these you cars here. do have automatic fire systems, front and rear, uh, that are triggered by temperature, by heat. The driver does not have to set them off. He gets everything unhooked, gets his fresh air system, his radio, his belts unhooked. He's out of there. You know, the funny thing is, we thought we got rid of the fuel pump, which these cars now have electric fuel pumps in the, in the fuel cell. Once we got rid of that fuel pump up on the front of the engine, we wouldn't have these kind of fires. But now, now they're breaking oil lines. Yeah. And these are oil fires that we're seeing. You see the lights are starting to come back up. Uh, it takes them a while to come back up to full temperature. But Jamie McMurray has certainly lit the place up. Not the way to have a hometown race. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. NASCAR on Fox at Kansas Speedway with 113 laps to go. Cleaning up after Jamie McMurray's car rocketed off into the turn three wall and then erupted in flames. So quite a good bit of fluid dry being put down and fire extinguishing equipment dispensed. So while they are cleaning up, let's have a look at the Camping World Truck Series. Point standing update after last night's race was won by Kyle Busch. Not eligible for points. Matt Crafton finished second. And the defending champion is the point leader with 120 over Timothy Peters, Ron Hornaday Jr., Herman Quiroga, Johnny Sauter. Ryan Blaney sixth making his Sprint Cup debut tonight in the number 12 for Penske Racing. Here's last night's winner, Kyle Busch, who led 105 laps last night. He is the free pass. Uh, so he had served his penalty. And here's Ryan Blaney having himself, I think, a, a good, strong drive uh, for Team Penske tonight. Yeah, he's one lap down, but uh, you know, you know how you know a rookie's having a good night? 
we have not mentioned his name. That's a good point. <laughs> and, and that was the goal of him and this team was to come here, qualify for this race, and run, be running at the checker flag. One driver that was glad to see this caution flag was Jeff Gordon in that 24 car right there. But he's in a little bit of a box because he has not been to pit road since lap 100. We are lap 155. 55 laps. That's the reason you see Jeff running down on the apron because the fuel pickup is in the right rear corner and he's trying to keep the fuel from running away from that pickup. They really hope to see pit road open pretty soon. Yeah, he and Carl Edwards, Larry, who was in three laps later. Uh, they are most at risk at running out of fuel. They could stop even though the pits are closed. But the penalty for doing so is restarting at the tail end of the longest line behind all the lapped cars. You don't want to do that if you can help it. One thing this caution did, it somewhat evens everybody out. They'll all be to pit road for fuel and tires. Under caution in Kansas, they've opened pit road, Matt. Jimmy Johnson, his car is good through one and two, free through three and four on the gas. But remember, he has a broken clutch. They're going to have to help give him a little push out of the box. Here they go. And he jams in gear, Steve. Right sides only for the five of Casey Kane, Matt. Dale our Jr. took four. Krista. Joey Logano making an adjustment. He said he needs help on the, the exit, more security, and that'll help his entry. It was a track bar. That's how they did it. Wow. See several drivers going for two tires there. Casey Kane, Tony Stewart, and Denny Hamlin, as well as Paul Menard. Jimmy Johnson almost got into Kyle Larson leaving. Yeah, he got a bottleneck there at the exit of pit road. Pretty crazy. So under caution with 110 laps to go here in Kansas. Five Hour Energy 400 on Fox is sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. We're under caution for Jamie McMurray, who hit the wall and had a scary, fiery ride, but he's been released from the care center. He's with Jeff Hammond. Yes, he did, Mike. He had a scary moment right there. Tell us what happened, Jamie. Well, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I just, you know, entered turn three, and I heard a small pop and then just lost all the steering and, and got into the fence and then and knocked the oil lines and everything off, had a little fire, but not sure. We didn't really have any tire issues all weekend. Keith had been uh, kind of reporting to me what the tires looked like after each stop and hadn't seen any really wear issues at all. So I don't know if it's just a bad tire, if I ran over something, just uh, lost all the air and ended up crashing. Glad you're okay. Sir, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Tough break for uh, one of the three drivers who calls this a home track. Lap down cars pitting now. Ryan Blaney on the left of your screen, scooting down pit road. He'll get out first in that group. Then Matt Kenseth and Mark Truex. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 17 was blocked in, had yep. to back up. He goes nowhere, but he got in his pit box crooked, Larry, and he just didn't have any room to get out and had to back up. Now you saw Kyle Busch in that group. He had to pit with the lap down cars, but he gets the free pass. Ready for the restart. Tony Stewart, Casey Kane. Kane, the leader, electing the outside in row one. Logano and Hamlin, who's rebounded nicely. How about Danica Patrick up for sixth alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, and rookie Kyle Larson. As we get ready for the restart, Clint Boyer and Michael Annette took the wave around, but they are still each one lap down. Green flag. Kane with Logano right behind him. Head off for turn one on the outside. Yeah, Joy Logano on the 22 of those top four drivers. He's the only one that went with four fresh tires on that stop. Should pay off big, big time for him. Excuse me, down the back here. He gets around Tony Stewart. We're back under full light. It's on the back straightaway. Good news. And Logano is locked right on to Casey Kane. He wants the lead. A little speedy dry up top. No consequence. Kane comes down covers the spot and leads this lap. Joy Logano drove that thing down into turn three. It's sparking. I mean, you can tell the speeds are coming up with this racetrack. He's hunting the lead down the back. He looks like he's got a nose up alongside of Kane. There he goes into turn three. Joy Logano back out front. I mean, he drives that thing down to the middle of that corner. I don't think I, I don't think he's getting completely out of the gas at all. Those four tires are paying off right now. 
And Darrell, what I liked about taking four tires right there with just a little over 100 laps to go, you and I were talking during commercial break, maybe gives you the opportunity to get two later. Yeah, because we saw Dale Jr. and a couple of other cars take two tires, and they really looked like they were giving up something in the beginning, but it paid off in the end. Patrick moves around the outside of Logano and moves into the top five. He's having a run of uh, this is a run of the year for Danica, no question about that. So rather Hamlin six uh, slips to six, Matt. Mike, early in the race, he spun. Nice recovery for that team. The car, though, has been on the edge all night long, almost ready to spin out uh, through each segment of the race. Right side tires that last stop. It should help tighten up that car just a tick. But, you know, Mike, remember what we talked about? I told you about Hamlin, that he's a fighter. Yes. Well, tonight he has put up a heck of a fight to hang on to that car. He's been spun out. He's gotten lapped. And here he is, still running in the top five, six now. Look at this race here as Ryan Newman in the 31 tries to hold off uh, the 55 of Brian Vickers, the 43 of Al Marola, Jeff Gordon, and Harvick. Krista? Well, Mike, Eric Almarola had a rocket in clean air to start this race, but throughout the race, he's just been getting a little bit loose. He said he's getting more and more loose on entry throughout the race, so they made an adjustment on that last stop to give him a little bit more security. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick, a slow stop because of a lug nut. They lost a lug nut. It fell off on the front. That's the reason Kevin Harvick had a slow stop. So I looked at that toolbox, Mike. I didn't see the horseshoe. Oh, uh, well, Harvick just moved around the outside of Jeff Gordon. And that moves the four up to 12. But that was a lot of the anticipation. You heard Krista's report on Eric Almirola in that blue number 43 right there. That just maybe as we went into the night and the track gained grip, that these cars would start to get a little bit looser with the, for these drivers. Yeah, I've seen, it, I've seen it a number of times, and that's certainly what has happened. Uh, but I do, uh, we're talking about Kevin Harvick here, right behind our Eric Almirola. That car looks a lot better on this run. He's already passed a number of cars. He was hung up in 18th there for before that caution, but now the car looks fast again. Now, Harvick gets a bit of a run because Al Marola was held up by Brian Vickers coming off turn two. We're looking at Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who right now is running third and fourth. Daryl, you talked about Danica Patrick, the run of the year. This is the run of her career right here. <laughs> yeah. 57 on track, starts. On a track like this, for sure. And I mean, she's closing up on Dale Jr. here. That she'll be putting some pressure on him in the next lap or so. That is a fast race car tonight that she's driving. 100 laps to go in the five-hour Energy 400, benefiting Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Joey Logano, your leader. How about a Saturday night NASCAR on Fox? Rank it up. Here's a look at Joey Logano's lead, two and a half seconds over Casey Kane. Now the two drivers who took the wave around on that caution, Clint Boyer and Michael Annette, both just made pit stops because by not stopping under that caution flag, they could only go so far under green without running out of gas. So Boyer unable to stay one lap down. He now falls to two down or three down now after the pit stop. And here's Patrick to the inside. Whoa. Dale Earnhardt Jr. She's for fourth. Get two of them at Tony one time. Stewart for third. 
You know, they said that Kevin Harvick sat down with Danica yesterday and really, really went over this racetrack like with a fine tooth comb, helping her with her throttle trace, her brake trace. And man, has it made a difference in the way she's run this weekend. Matt? And Mike, on that pit stop where she hung the lug, she said, no worries, we'll get it back, and it's exactly what she's doing. But on that run, she also said that the car started to lose the balance. It was more sketchy, especially in traffic down in turns three and four. They went back on their track bar adjustment. Tony Gibson said that will put us back to where we were, and she certainly is. That car on a rail right now moving toward the front. Third place for Patrick, four seconds off the lead. And here's the reaction. <laughs> She passed both Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart. Talked to uh, her spotter, Brandon Menashe, in the elevator yesterday, and he said, you know, when the car is really right, she is really good. They have a lot of confidence in her. Just a matter of giving her a car that, that she has the trust in and that she can make go fast, and she's doing it tonight. But, Daryl, if she can close this deal out tonight with a top five finish, what about her confidence leaving this racetrack? Be huge going into Charlotte, another mile and a half race track, very similar to this one. Well, I can tell you, she's going somewhere. She's running some fast laps right now. now. She is one second behind second place Casey Kane. Steve? And the update on Casey Kane, remember, on two tires, Mike, he said, I'm a little free in and I'm a little free off. And crew chief Kenny Francis reminding him, he said, Well, we took just two tires that time, just give, have some patience. I, I tell you, it may not be Casey Kane, but another driver that's on the move is his teammate, Jimmy Johnson, in this 48 car. This car has come to life. He just drove by Tony Stewart the lap before. Right now, Jimmy Johnson has his sights set on the top five, sitting there in the sixth spot. Well, Stewart has suddenly fallen like a rock to seventh. It's Tony's lap times. Uh, are almost a second slower than the quickest cars on track right now. You want to know where he came from? That four car is going somewhere. He restarted in the 12th, 13th spot. He's run, he just now passed Tony Stewart up to seventh, and that's one of the fastest cars on the track, Kevin Harvick. I think Tony Stewart's fallen victim to just changing right side tires. As Joey Logano tries to drive away with a two and a half second lead. Caution is out for Kurt Busch's spin. The pits are open. Matt. Danica Patterson waiting on the gas man. Two tires for the 10, Steve. Dale Earnhardt Jr. says the front grip is better, but you took the rear out of it. Chris Devota. The run it starts neutral for Joey Logano, then gets loose. He needs stability in the rear of the car on a long run. Joey Logano scoots out first. Matt Kenseth will get the free pass. We are under caution at lap 180. It's the sixth caution flag of the night in Kansas. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by NOS. No nonsense. Drink NOS. By Subway, the official training restaurant of Carl Edwards and athletes everywhere. And by Sprint, get a Sprint family plan for as low as $25 per month each. Visit a Sprint store today. Going to take a bit of repair to get Kurt Busch back into this race. He really tore up a bunch of grass and look way off in the distance. Kurt Busch will be in front of the uh, 78. And around he goes. Yep. How many times have we seen that tonight? I mean, just uh, all of a sudden, the car just snaps out from under these guys. Just that's how edgy these cars are tonight and how close to loose and spinning out they're running them. And it appears most drivers are getting looser as we get into the night. Yes, sir. And we looked but did not see any contact no, I didn't between see Martin Truex and Kurt Busch. I didn't see any. No. One thing we did see, most drivers went with just two right side tires. It is now a one-stop race to get to the end of this race now. Now, he really mowed the grass coming down through uh, the trialville here. As low as these cars are to the ground, it does a lot of damage underneath the front of that car. Sixth caution flag out, 85 laps to go. NASCAR on Fox continues after these messages and a word from your Fox station. We can do this all now. That's too close. Well, I've got eight at night before he's there. Sorry about that. 
Wasn't his fault. I was completely out of the throttle. Hold on to it there. Hold on to it. Stay in the gas. Lock it down. Lock it down. Lock it down. Lock it down. Oh, Lucy, I'm back in trouble. Oh, no, no. It was the Super Bowl that the lights went out. <laughs> well, the lights are back on in Kansas. See, that's how you know she's got a great car tonight. She's having fun. Yep. Danica Patrick, who is running in seventh behind Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, Casey Kane, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Kevin Harvick. Johnson is the race leader. Now, Harvick has led 90 laps. He's the most of the eight leaders, 18 lead changes. And 21 cars on the lead lap, including Matt Kenseth, who just got the free pass on this sixth caution flag of the night. For I believe Kurt Bush's spin. I believe, Mike, that this could be a, a race here between the 22 and the four. They were the two best cars coming to that last caution. 22 obviously had to lead Joey Logano, but that four car was on the move. We'll see how it shakes out here. And about our top 15 drivers elected to go with just right side tires only on that last pit stop. Pace car to pit road. Jimmy Johnson up high. Kyle Busch down on the inside having overcome that speeding penalty. And they take off with Busch a car length out front. As long as the leader goes in the restart box, doesn't matter who gets to the line first. Who will come off turn two first? Johnson. Wow, what a run. And when you get that high line, you get to back into the throttle. Boy, you can make some great speed coming off the high side of that turn. Wow, Patrick had a look underneath Dale Jr. entering turn three. Thought better of it. Feeling a little tight right there with Dale Jr. Logano for second. Casey Kane, that's a tight little pack. Sparks fly from Joey Logano's Ford as he tries to keep it low on the racetrack. And look at that four car around the outside of Casey Kane in the five. He just gets through the middle of the corner and off the corner so well. He can pick up the trouble turn oh, four. Goodness, around here Trying to get past Paul Menard. A.J. Allmendinger spins. Oh, and no. Allgaier and Gilliland have a horrible collision oh, right at no. the start finish line. Oh, that's bad. It is David Gilliland's car that comes to a halt in flames. Well, he's all in but there destroyed. Moving Window net going down. Window That's a beautiful down. thing. Justin Algar as well as David Gilliland. Gilliland's got his down. And he's trying to get out. Uh, gosh, that car was destroyed, man. That thing was. Wow, what a wreck. And the window net down on uh, the Gators car, Justin Algar. That is the indication to safety crews. I'm OK. When the driver drops that window net. What a hard, hard hit. Daryl, I saw this brewing from turn two. Paul Menard was kind of backing up in the middle of the field and was there was a log jam of cars entering turn three. They just couldn't all get off turn four in one piece. Yeah, the cars are just loose enough right now. The tracks freed up enough. It uh, it just doesn't take anything for one of them to step out. You see uh, yeah. Algar waving there and he's OK. Thank goodness. Had such a great run going all night long. Justin Algar. I know I know Gilliland let his net down and but he's he's moving around get trying to climb out here Daryl. Yeah, I guess he's yep. He's OK. I can't imagine he isn't stunned a little bit. Well. What a tough break having a great run Justin Algar in a 51 car. David Gilliland moving a little gingerly now. There, watch uh, Almendinger on the bottom. Paul Menard, the 27, is the car that's backing up. Here comes Almendinger to the inside. At the left side, right down on the line down there, and the car gets a little squirrely with him, gets a little loose, and here we go. And it's on. Boy, when he comes down the hill. And hits that Algar. 51, and that turned him in. That turned him right into a Gilliland yep. when he did that, and uh, it was a hard, hard impact. 
And here's what we're talking about. You saw Allgaier get clipped by Almendinger, and watch that red car shoot across the track right into the path of David Gilliland. And I guarantee you, Gilliland was on it, trying to get through it without getting in it, and he didn't quite make it, and that is an unbelievable crash. But you're right, Daryl. I'm sure David Gilliland was full song right yeah. there. Yeah, he was yeah. trying as you know, he's trying to stay in the gas, trying to clear the wreck. And of course, when the 51 came up in front of him, uh, nothing he could do. Gosh, wow. I, I, I see wrecks like this and I, and, 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 and I think about, well, back in the day, you wouldn't probably walk away from that car. They'd have to help you away from that car. And these guys crash these cars. It's just such a testament to the safety innovations that are in the car, the driver, the Hans device, the safer barriers, so many things are a hundred times better than what we dealt with. And the best news, both the drivers in that hard crash walked away. Yep. Amazing. There's a car in there somewhere. Poor travel grass taking a beating, and so is uh, just uh, A.J. Allmendinger's car. Pit Road is still closed, but the pace car continues to bring everyone down Pit Road because basically the front stretch is blocked, headed out of the, the travel area here. Not much left there. All right, Allmendinger scoots out. We're under caution for the seventh time because of this. The remains of David Gilliland's car gets hauled back to the garage area. He climbed out, and so did Justin Allgaier, while Casey Mears and A.J. Allmendinger and Paul Menard stay in the race after this pileup. Pit road is open. Brad Keselowski comes in along with Tony Stewart, Menard, Alex Bowman, and Carl Edwards. So a bit of pit work going on here, and we lost a great one. Uh, this week, Norman Koshimuzu, gas man, uh, transport driver extraordinaire, worked for Die Guard, for Bobby Allison, Daryl Waltrip, and Larry, worked for you at Robert Yates Racing. Yeah, probably, Mike, my 18 years as a crew chief, not an individual more committed and dedicated to doing whatever it takes, very committed to winning races. Welcome back to Kansas, finishing up the seventh caution flag, which began when A.J. Allmendinger's 47 uh, got loose trying to pass the 27 of Paul Menard. Allmendinger's car slides up, makes contact, and it's on. And as Allmendinger shoots across the track, he clips the 51 of Justin Allgaier, which flies up track into the path of David Gilliland. And a very, very hard hit for Almondinger and Gilliland. Both climbed from their cars. And we listened in on Justin Allgaier. Rick, I'm behind you here. Talk to me, bud. Talk to me. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. Just out of breath. I'm sorry, boys. I was trying everything I could to miss him. Holy crap, was that a hit. Hold your eye, bud. Good, man. I'm here to race another day. I tell you, another guy that did an amazing job on that whole thing was the 17 car of uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I mean, he avoided that. Could have been right up in the middle of it. Stenhouse, the first car one lap down as Jimmy Johnson and Joey Logano lead them back to green with Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch in row two. Casey Kane and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in row three. And Kyle Larson goes way downstairs trying to grab a spot with his number 42 and he just about ran out of front stretch apron there it was real real close i think we're getting ready to see that probably the two best cars go at it here on this run the 22 and the four madonna wants the lead back gets it johnson looks back to the inside and he's got company kevin harvick all over the 48 for second place now 
Well, Darrell, it's taken Kevin Harvick in that four car about 70 to 80 laps to recover from being trapped after that green flag stop when he got the free pass back on lap 109. It's taken him that long to get back up near the front. Yeah, he was hung up mid-pack there forever. He couldn't go anywhere, but now that he's back up front, he's showing the speed that he had earlier. David Gilliland checked and released from the infield care center. Good news there. And I got to tell you, Larry, if he doesn't get around, if, if Kevin Harvey doesn't get around Jimmy Johnson in a 48 here pretty quick, that 22 has been known to scoot away from the whole field. He's been bad fast, too. When we went to Daytona in February, how many would have picked Joey Logano at this point in the season to have two victories and be on the verge of a third? Jeff Hammond. David Gilliland, are you all right? That was a hard lick. It was a hard hit. It was the hardest hit I've had in a while. So I just want to say hi to my wife. I know she's concerned at home and uh, looking forward to going home and spending Mother's Day with her and uh, saying happy Mother's Day to my mom. And just kind of a tough hit, tough way to end our night. It was the hardest hit I've had in a long time. I'm glad you're right. David Gilliland swept up in the seventh caution flag of the night. Jeff Gordon goes after teammate Casey Kane and takes away sixth place. He's been in the same boat as Kevin Harvick because remember he got trapped after making a green flag pit stop and took the wave around at that fourth caution at lap 109. It's taken him this long to get back up there as well, just like Harvick. He won. I've been I'm very impressed as well with that 48 car, Larry. He said running second right now Kevin Harvick right on his bumper but I'm telling you what he's hanging in there pretty tough right now the 48 is Justin Allgaier released from the infield care center as well after that hit you heard his in-car radio let's go back to that restart we talked about Kyle Larson with the big bullseye on the hood of his number 42 see what happens between he and Greg Biffle on this restart well, Larson gets a nice run on the restart here goes to the apron and Biffle just doesn't give him. Wow. A, he doesn't give him any room. Not, it was not a whole lot of room. Doesn't give him any room. And he's still fighting back. Biffle is there to keep him pinned down. As you see, Biffle seems to be a little ticked off at the rookie. Yep. When it's sorted out, Larson is now 11th and Biffle is 15th. With Carl Edwards and Brad Kozlowski between them. Or now Edwards right there behind Larson. They're about six seconds off the lead. You know, Kyle Busch has not had that good of a night, Mike and Daryl, because remember, he was busted for speeding on pit road. He got the free pass back on that fifth caution at lap 150, and they pitted at 158. They elected, they have stayed out the last two cautions to get track position. Now, the downside, Matt, is he's a, he'll have to make a green flag pit stop a lot earlier than all the other drivers. Larry, he won the Truck Series event last night, hoping to learn more for tonight's event. The car... Whoa, oh, Spitter. And that's Kurt Busch again off turn number two. Yeah, that car hadn't been right. Uh, I watched it earlier uh, down in three and four, took off up the track with Kurt, and I think that the car just hadn't been right since he spun. Earlier spin. Busch started the race sixth. Remember, Darrell, he came down through the in, through the grass in right. the tri-oval, and certainly some damage had to be done to the underbody of that car. Right. The car just hadn't been the same. He's got a left rear tire down right there, as if yep. maybe somebody got in there and cut that left rear tire down. I'm not sure who he was racing with here. Let's see. There he is. Not sure if the left rear, you can't tell from there, but the left rear tire is definitely down. Not sure if he made contact with somebody to cut it down or not. Now, a few laps prior, uh, he and Ricky Stenhouse were going at it, but that was the right, not the left side. Of yeah, the that's down in three and four. I saw those two cars go up the track right there, made some contact. Yeah. Let's see if we make any more contact. Well, kind of hard to say, but you can see his left rear tire definitely knocked down. That's the eighth caution flag of the night. Uh, Martin Truex got the free pass on the last caution. This one will benefit Ryan Blaney. I get a feeling this is really going to jumble up strategy because I talked about Kyle Busch that has not been on pit road since lap 158. And remember, Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin, Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, Paul Menard, Brad Keselowski, they were on pit road the last caution. But all of these drivers up here, 
they're somewhat in a little bit of a box. It's like they need to come to pit road, just like I think you're about to see Jimmy Johnson, but Joey Logano elected to stay out. Well, Jimmy Johnson hasn't been in since lap 157, so here's Matt. And Mike, uh, Chad Knauss is going to go with a four-tire strategy here that way. Later, they can go for two if they need to. A uh, track bar adjustment here on the 48 of Johnson. Brad Keselowski gets the fender pulled. You see just a little damage behind the right rear wheel where he had a little contact with someone. That is probably the left rear off Kurt Busch's car. Now, even with making this stop here, they too will still have to make one more stop to get to the end, but it won't have to be to pit road for very long for fuel. I believe that 48 clutch miraculously has fixed itself because he ripped out the pits pretty good right there. Larry, you surprised Kyle Busch did not stop? Very surprised. All right. Kurt Busch has us under caution for the eighth time tonight. 61 laps to go. Here's a closer look at tonight's race with Sprint. Jimmy Johnson owns the most top 10 finishes at Kansas Speedway 13. Switching out of the new Sprint family plan, up to 10 of your friends and family can get unlimited talk, text, and a gig of data for as little as 25 bucks a month each on the Sprint network. Let's check in at the Hollywood Hotel. With Michael Waltrip, Chris Myers, and Jimmy Johnson, also the all-time elapsed leader here in Kansas. But let's check our Ram race summary. And Joey Logano just in front of Kevin Harvick. Uh, Michael, those are the two-time winners so far this season. Then the Daytona 500 winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr., running third. And I like the guy that's running in fifth, Chris, Jeff Gordon. He's had the same trouble that Kevin Harvick's had all night, losing his track position. Like Harvick, he's battled back to a top five spot. Look for Jeff Gordon to close strong tonight. Harvick, who's led the most laps in this race, 89, has fallen back as far as 21st, but has worked his way all the way up to second. When he's won his two races this year, he has dominated. There were four other races when he wasn't even in the top 35. Yeah, but he's been able to overcome some serious trouble in this race, so he, he'll be tough at the end. And we're getting ready to go green. Ready for the restart. Joey Logano's your race leader. He finished fourth here last fall and led 33 laps. 22 cars on the lead lap. Out of turn four, green flag. Logano with a little assist from Kyle Busch there. Trying to stay even with Harvick into turn one. Earnhardt in third, Kyle Busch in fourth. Not anymore. Jeff Gordon to the inside for fourth place as Harvick takes the lead. That's what Harvick's been looking for for quite some time, to get that thing back out front, get that clean air, and of course, Joy Logano was able to drive off and leave everybody. We'll see what Harvick can do now that he's back out front. Danica Patrick did not get a good restart, dropping to 11th at turn three. Matt Kenseth up the outside in the 20. There's Patrick to the inside of Ryan Newman. Why did we ever believe we would not be talking about Matt Kenseth before this night was over? Because he was a lap down. He's barely, he's been outside the top 20 most of this race. Well, for 200 and some laps, we haven't spoken much about him. But, the, you know, it's his show time. And old Matt will always figure out a way to be up there at the end. Not a factor in either practice or qualifying. As Kevin Harvick and Jeff Gordon both just logged their fastest laps of the night. Kyle Larson in that 42 right now. He's running in the 12th position, and there you see Greg Biffle in the 16 just behind him in 13th. Biff had a little right side damage there. He got into the wall going off into turn one, but it uh, wasn't very severe and it uh, hadn't affected the car much at all. That was early on. That was uh, several laps ago. Teammates battling for third, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon, while Jimmy Johnson moves to the inside of Brad Keselowski for 14th. And on that last caution, Jimmy Johnson took four tires. Brad Keselowski, they did fuel only. Jeff Gordon trying to get some clean air across the hood of his Chevrolet. Takes third away from his teammate. Got three Hendrick, uh, sure, what? 
Got the Hendrick Chevrolet's running third, fourth, and fifth right now with Johnson 14th with four new tires. So uh, they're looking pretty good tonight for Rick Hendrick's uh, little racing operation. Let's take a look at the pit stop averages for four tire stops and see who's been on it tonight. Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s number 88 crew and by Steve Letarte averaging 12.4 seconds. 12.4 <laughs> seconds for That's four what? tires. And think about it. These tires and wheels, they have five lug nuts <laughs> per wheel, not to mention dumping 19 gallons of Sunoco race fuel, roughly. I mean, Larry, a driver wouldn't even have time. To, you couldn't say, can I get a drink of water? Because you, you wouldn't have time to reach in and get it. Well, it's made a difference. Junior's in the top five in position to challenge here with 54 laps to go. Though he's running 3.2 seconds off of Kevin Harvick, but with inside of the lead. But we've seen where having a good race car is important, but track position as well. We saw that with Kevin Harvick earlier in the race when he got back in traffic and couldn't go anywhere. Four Chevys in the top five. There's the difference. Joey Logano's Ford in second. But in the next five, two Toyotas, Kyle Busch and his teammate Matt Kenseth. The Fords of Carl Edwards and Eric Almirola and the Chevy of Danica Patrick rounds out your top ten. 22 lead lap cars with 53 to go. I know these guys are always talking about, you know, clean air and all that stuff. And I always say, God, how can that be so? It can't be that make that much difference. I wish you'd look at Kevin Hart. There he goes. And there's Joey Logano at the line now. I mean, what a huge difference getting out front makes. But when Harvick was stuck in the back as the caution flag flew during a round of pit stops, he came out in 18th place and could not advance. Never moved. How can that be the same car that was stuck in 18th <laughs> that's out in front flying away now? I'm telling you. We've been talking seen. about the importance of track position, and I have really been trying to figure out what Kyle Busch and Dave Rogers with that 18 car because they continue to stay out. He has not been on pit road since lap 158. That's about 57 laps ago. Now, there were 20 cautions in there, but I think what he's going to do, I think they're going to get to the point where they feel like they can make a green flag pit stop, make it to the end without stopping again, knowing that everyone else will have to. The danger of that, they'll need to make that stop and hope we don't get a caution before everyone else comes to pit road. That has to be the strategy they're on right now. Making a, making a nice fuel run here. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's in sixth place. He's seven seconds off the lead. Uh, Danica's moved back up into the top ten. She is ten seconds off the lead. As we said, she got shuffled back on that restart back to 11th and then repassed Brian Newman. She's about seven tenths behind Eric Al Almirola. Brian Blaney having a great night for Team Penske. He got the uh, lucky dog and he's in 22nd his dad Dave also tried to qualify for this race but was the one car that did not make the field trying to become the first father son to compete in a NASCAR event since 2005 I believe uh, Bobby Hamilton senior and junior at Atlanta and Ryan is scheduled to run one more sprint up series race the fall race at Talladega because that's a weekend that they'll have off of you. this is what I like though golden opportunity capitalize on it Go out here, run all the laps, get the best possible finish you can. Don't make any mistakes and capitalize on this opportunity. I think capitalizing is what Jeff Gordon in that 24 car is about to do when he caught Joey Logano in that 22. Did you see the pointer going into turn one? 205 miles per hour. That's well, Kyle moving, Bush, baby. Matt, how long can he stay out there? The guys are up on the wall. They're in their window now. That's what Dave Rogers was holding off as soon as they reached that number they're going to call him the pit road the guys are up on the wall remember the car was wicked loose earlier he said it was wrecking loose he could barely hold on to it pulls into the box nicely going to make a chassis adjustment on this at one point dave rogers told kyle it's almost like a sailboat clean air is everything that's why they were trying to stay up front for track position they are packing in full of fuel he is away I'm not so sure, Matt, that an audible wasn't called there. I think they maybe wanted four tires. They were having trouble on the right side, and they called it off and just went with the two right sides. Well, he was sixth, Larry, when he came to pit road, and now he's gone one lap down and distance to race leader Kevin Harvick. Yeah, this is hold your breath time for him. 
because he cannot stand to have anything happen right now. A caution flag ruins his night. Good news for Kyle Busch is right now he's the, well, he was the first car one lap down. Ricky Stenhouse is now. Kevin Harvick is your leader. With 41 laps to go in Kansas, Kevin Harvick leads Jeff Gordon by 2.8 seconds. Their lap times continue to be within a tenth of a second of each other, with Joey Logano third. Now, one week from tonight, NASCAR's best drivers take to the track at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the 30th annual NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race. A million dollars on the line, part of Fox Sports 1's 10 Days of Thunder. Coverage on Fox Sports 1 begins next Saturday, 7 Eastern. It's definitely a classic checkers or wreckers. I mean, that's all. That's what that race is all about. The driver who has led the most laps has gone to victory lane. The last three races, Kevin Harvick has now led 111. Of the 267 lap distance, 39 to go. He's, uh, nobody's going to catch him. At least in the leading laps category. Mike, you know, I'm always looking at trends, just like all the other crew chiefs. Now, we only have three previous spring races here at Kansas, but when you look at those three races, the average lap of the last caution is right around lap 190 with 77 to go. Right, right now, we have 38 to go. You know the one crew chief that hopes my trends right? Dave Rogers and Kyle Busch that this thing will go out green. We've got a green flag look to it. I mean, everybody's pretty well strung out and I don't see anybody really working on anybody too hard here at this time. Yeah, we're not seeing the clumps of cars like the one that created the uh, Almendinger and Menard collision. Exactly. We got got a few cars bunched up here in the middle of three and four right now, but pretty much nobody's minding their manners at this point with just a little ways to go here. 37 laps to go. Darrell, the only thing I think that might could offset my trend is the fact of the drivers we've seen, how they just all of a sudden coming up off the corner just snap loose, like we've seen several drivers. Now, those are daytime trends, not nighttime trends. My trend, notebook, right? I didn't have a very <laughs> thick notebook on nighttime trends. <laughs> I really screw Hammond up. No, that's true. This is the first <laughs> night race in the brief history of Kansas Speedway. Held Saturday night so everyone could get home for Mother's Day tomorrow. Jeff Gordon has been knocking tenths out of Kevin Harvick's lead. Two tenths last lap and two tenths the lap before. It's down to 2.4 seconds. I think that'll balance back out. Kevin's had to pass a couple of cars. Slows him down a little bit. And we just saw Kyle Busch in that 18 car. He's back in the 22nd position, one lap down, but he's the first driver that's one lap down, so he would get the free pass. Well, for the third lap in a row here, Gordon has been faster than Harvick. And this time it tilts the other way by two tenths. Yeah, I think what you were seeing, Mike, was that uh, Kevin Harvick in the four was catching a lap car or two here. And uh, that, that cost him a tenth or two. But when they get in clean track in the car, to, car for car, the four is still the fastest car. And we're going to see a lot of these drivers start to peel off, starting to make green flag pit stops. Look at it come down. Look at Gordon get that runoff turn four. He picked up another two tenths on Harvick that time, and traffic was not a factor. Casey Kane on pit road. Steve. And Mike, they're going to put four tires on that five car this time. Kenny Francis saying that'll free it up the way you want it. A small chassis adjustment on that five. And again, they've taken two tires the previous two stops. Four tires this time for Casey Kane. Now that lap leader, Kevin Harvick, had to deal with the lap car of Michael Annette. And Jeff Gordon chopped almost a second off Harvick's lead. Oh, he can look out there. He can see that four car now. Greg Biffle in the pit lane from 15th place. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes after Joey Logano for third as Logano is going to head for pit road. Hmm. Krista? Greg Biffle has been saying he's had no turn at all. In fact, he said he nearly wrecked back on lap 218. So Greg Biffle has been needing help, needing this stop, needing help with his turnability on the track. Meanwhile, Joey Logano also coming in. Joey Logano has had him so strong when he said he's missing that clean air. So this car is starting to come to him, but he's been a little bit too free. He needs a little bit more stability, a little bit more of a tight race car for this final stretch. Thanks, Krista. Second and third place, Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. are pit side for service. So is Danica Patrick. I Matt. think Harvick has to come this time. He can't stay out there. You know what Jeff Gordon was doing, Mike? He was running some of his fastest laps because he knew he was getting ready to pit. Krista. Well, Jeff Gordon said taking two tires on the last stop allowed him to run up top. They're taking four for this final stretch. And the leader is in, Kevin Harvick, to the pit lane. That should hand the lead to Carl Edwards. Edwards from Matt Kenseth and Eric Almirola. Out on track, Krista. Wow, they are so close on fuel. Their plan was to come in around lap 236. That was as far as Roddy Childers thought they could stretch it. But Kevin Harvick was able to make it in. He said, if we go with two, I need a little bit more free. But they are going with four, again, for the final stretch. The track bar adjustment to tighten them up. Hey, Ryan Newman also finishing up service. Eric Almirola in the 43 car on pit road. Now, Carl Edwards, he actually pitted the caution after most of these drivers that made this pit stop, so he can probably go another six to eight laps, as well as Matt Kenseth, Denny Hammond, Tony Stewart, Paul Menard, and Brad Keselowski. Larry didn't think the four car had a stellar stop, and he didn't because as they come back out on the track, the 24 just went by Kevin Harvey going down the back straightaway. Kristen. Well, Mike, so far, all of our leaders have been taking four tires. That is not the call for the 43 of Eric Almirola. Despite taking two on the last stop, they go with two tires again. Martin Truex also in and out of pit lane, and this would be the last scheduled stop with 27 laps to go. Pit this time. Let's pit this time. That is Jimmy Fennick, Carl Edwards' crew chief. He is the only one of the drivers who calls Kansas his home track on the Sprint Cup Series. Who's not had difficulty tonight. Jamie McMurray, a fiery crash. And Clint Boyer, a spin and multiple difficulties have left him two laps down. There's Boyer. So Carl Edwards will give up the lead to get his final service of the night. Matt Kenseth picks up the lead. Matt Yoakum on pit road. And Jimmy Finnegan and Carl Edwards debated back and forth two or four. Carl wanted four, but Jimmy told him, we're going to go just with fuel and right sides. We can't afford the time. And that will lead Matt Kenseth as the next to pit. And everybody else who is on the lead lap has another, has a cushion of 10 or 12 laps or so. And here's Kenseth. Matt. And Matt's biggest complaint, the car was tight from the center to exit. But he too said, being close to the front, that track position made the car completely different. Almost like having six tires on that Toyota. The grip he would pick up versus four. Jimmy Johnson is the new race leader. Now Johnson and eight others, Larry could probably go another nine, ten laps. But with these drivers having fresh tires, how long do the others dare stay out? Yeah, they're going to be giving up quite a bit of time. But yeah, by my calculations, they can go to about lap 250, which is about six laps from now as far as fuel. Kyle Larson in that 42 car, his last trip to pit road, he actually changed just two right side tires. That was the last caution when he pitted to lap 204. Now, when this all cycles around, if we stay green, prior to pit stops, the lead, Kevin Harvick had a 1.3 second lead on Jeff Gordon, but they are just the opposite now. 
Well, be Johnson is your leader, and let's have a look at the pit comparison between Harvick and Gordon. And this is what happened. I mean, the 24 had another one of their great stops, and the four mediocre stop. And when they came back out on the track, the 24 was ahead of the four, and you can see right there, Larry, the difference. Yeah, you can see Kevin Harvick was a little bit better than Jeff Gordon, but you can see the difference right there in the crew. And right now, Jeff Gordon's got, he's going to be in front of Kevin Harvick. Yeah, he's in front of him by a good bit and actually pulling away. They came out pretty close together. Gordon was ahead of Harvick going down the back when he came back upon the track. And right now, Jeff Gordon is pulling away from Kevin Harvick. Yeah, that graphic actually gave the advantage to Kevin Harvick, but Jeff Gordon pitted a lap earlier than Kevin Harvick that gave him that much of an advantage as far as fresh tires. So it's time for our sprint 20 to go. Jimmy Johnson is your race leader. He's the first of nine drivers that still need another pit stop. The first of the drivers who have completed their final service is Jeff Gordon. 24.9 seconds off the lead ahead of Kevin Harvick. Kyle Larson right now is the second place car and Brian Vickers third, but they will need another stop. So will Brad Keselowski in fourth. And here is Larson to the pit lane. And that's your sprint 20 to go. Matt? And Larson is in. You can see they're going to make one more adjustment for the run to the finish. Fuel is going in. Right side tires again for the 42 of Larson. So that leaves eight drivers who have one stop to make in the five-hour energy 400 benefiting special operations warrior foundation those pit stops have better come soon and you won't miss them jimmy johnson continues to lead lap 204 is when he was last on pit road paul menard on pit road and joey logano trying to get back on the lead lap he's got fresh tires so does Dale Earnhardt Jr. Five drivers at the front have yet to make that final pit stop. Jimmy Johnson, Brian Vickers, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, and Tony Stewart. So here's Jeff Gordon in sixth, the first of the drivers that have made that final scheduled stop. Brian Vickers is in, and that will leave four out on the track. Steve? And Mike, Brian Vickers has been battling tight in the center all night long. He said he just doesn't quite have the power on the straightaway, but again, tight in the center is what they've been trying to work on. They'll get back out one lap down, a lot of cars a lap down, but that will change as Johnson, Keselowski, Hamlin, and Stewart make their final stop, Larry, if they make a final stop. Well, they would have to go 63 laps, Mike, and that would be essentially with no help from caution. I go back to Brad Keselowski's win here in June of 2011. He went 57 laps, which was unheard of. He was having to shut the engine off in the corners that right. day. Tony Stewart's in, and so is Jimmy Johnson. Stewart finishes up his service. Here's Matt. Jimmy said that he did not like the car on four tires, chassis adjustment, and fuel for the 48. Splash and go. That's it, brother. For Jimmy Johnson. Pretty nice call. Ricky Stenhouse on pit road as Jeff Gordon is now eight tenths of a second up on the number four. Yeah, uh, that's the battle Harvard. I've been watching these two guys right here because I figured it'd filter back to them sooner or later. But the four car, I think Kevin tried and tried and tried, and he realized he's not going to be able to get around Jeff Gordon, and he's cooled his jets just a little bit right now. I don't know if he thinks he can make a late run at him or not, but right now the 24 is the best car. So the two leaders, Brad Keselowski and Denny Hamlin, have yet to make their stop. Ten laps to go. Keselowski is the leader, and the trend not in his favor. And, Mike, when I look at his lap times, he's just not slowed down that much. Now, Denny Hamlin in 11, he's hit pit road here with nine laps to go. But I just, I've not seen Brad Keselowski and Paul Wolf slow their pace down much with this two car. That would indicate they're going to try to go to the end. But remember what he did. He's done it before, Keselowski has. Of course, he, uh, you know, he was kicking the thing out of gear and coasting. But they remember, they kept everybody a lap down early in this race. Oh, wait a minute. Here he comes. 
Brad Keselowski will be the final driver to make their green flag pit stop and Jeff Gordon the point leader coming in who said yesterday uh, Wednesday in a press conference he said points are fine but everybody wants to needs to get a win this year everything has changed he said he would give the points lead up he'd give his top five backs his top tens he wouldn't care if he was 23rd in points i just want to win a race well he's going to have a great chance tonight he's a little bit better than kevin hardy but he does get held up and held up in traffic at that here he's having trouble getting by the 11 car denny hamlin which is allowing kevin to close up pretty quick here but i just don't think kevin's got the car to run with the 24 right now But well, certainly getting past Hamlin took a lot out of Jeff Gordon's lead. Less than half a second. Seven to go. Seems like when uh, Kevin Harvick moved to the very top of the racetrack, I mean, just tippy-toeing around the top, he picked up a little bit of speed, but I don't think it's enough to, to run down the 24. I just don't think he's got what it takes. And they had identical lap times that time around within two one-hundredths of a second. Six to go. And they're running two totally different lines. The 24 around the bottom, the four up around the top. And I think the 24 is just prevailing right now with a little bit better race car. And Gordon caught rookie Alex Bowman at a great place, the end of the back straightaway. So it did not much affect Gordon's corner entry and slow him down. And it did hurt Kevin some on, yep. on the corner exit there because he caught him right in the middle of the corner. So right now, Jeff Gordon in the catbird seat. He's pulling away from Kevin Harvick, and that's the only competition he's got right now. Yeah, that was a big chunk that time, Jeff Gordon, over Kevin Harvick as far as the score and monitor. Seventh place race, Danica Patrick, Eric Almirola. That's Cole Witt up on the outside. It's been an amazing night for Danica Patrick tonight. Just run solid all night long. Been in the top ten, and here she is. Going to come seventh right now with just a few laps to go. And she could be on the verge of her best career Sprint Cup finish. Yeah, Mike, she only has one top 10, and that was eight in that Daytona 500 last year where she sat on the pole. Alan Gustafson grew up a Jeff Gordon fan. Now he is Jeff's crew chief and strategist. Did he make the winning call? I think he did tonight. Uh, the car has just been flawless. It's good on the long run, and right now that's what he's having, and he's just, again, it continues to stretch it out over the four-car Kevin Harvey. 1.1 seconds now with three to go. And now, not Harvick. a lot of traffic ahead either. It's pretty clear sailing a couple of cars, but the, no real issues. Harvick did get two tits back that lap right there. I think right now, the, the, I think Larry Jeff's just looking in his mirror and saying, look, I don't want to make any mistakes. Don't want to overdrive this thing. Don't want to, don't want to do anything wrong. And, of course, we know how great Jeff Gordon is. He never makes very many mistakes. Lap traffic ahead. Greg Biffle and some slower cars ahead of him. Two laps to go. Dead even that time on the yep. stopwatch. Just being real cautious. Casey Kane is third, 10 seconds back. Then Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr. 16 cars on the lead lap. Biffle the last of them. Around the outside of Travis Quaffles, number 32. Here he comes. Jeff Gordon will be looking at the white flag. And that's the first flag he wanted to see for sure. The race will end no matter what. And uh, we got us another winner, boys. Boy, Harvick Harvick's is coming. coming all over the racetrack. And a lot of traffic in front of Jeff Gordon. He's going to catch him down in turn three and four. Harvick got a great run down the back straightaway. It's down to half a second. He'll try. Four tenths of a second. I think it's a... Uh, a third of a second. Great effort. Jeff Gordon off turn four. Win number 89 for Jeff Gordon by two car lengths over Kevin Harvick. Harvick made it interesting, though. A little bit of traffic that he ran up on. I didn't think Jeff was being mighty cautious. Third on the all-time NASCAR win list. His last victory, Martinsville, in October. He is the ninth driver to win in 2014, and it is Jeff Gordon's 19th different season with at least one victory. Hey, boys, you think we could have 16 winners this year? We're, we're working we're that direction. Up on it. We're getting them closer every week. <laughs> Woo. Jeff's last Kansas win came in 2002, 12 years ago, and look at how Harvick 
went from half a second down to two car lengths back at the wire. He gave it all he had. Of what a great wow. night for the four cars. Started on a pole with a new track record. Finished second to this man right here. Mike, you think the man could win 100 races? Didn't know if I'd ever see that or not. That's 89. If I would date was David Pearson with 105, I'd be counting. I'd be worried. Yeah. A lot of seasons best in this finishing order. Jeff Gordon getting the win. Casey Kane third, his first top five of the year. And how about a career best finish for Danica Patrick in that 10? Finished seventh. She was up there all night long. And what about Matt Kenseth? He comes home 10th. And yeah, what a great rebound there. Unbelievable. Joey Logano, the first Ford in fourth, and Kenseth, the first Toyota in 10th. Kyle Larson, uh, the rookie, he finishes 12th. Another good night for him. And of the hometown group, Carl Edwards in sixth, upholding the honor of the Midwest drivers. Career best for Danica Patrick, and a tremendous win for four time, he'll remind you. Winston Cup champion, but he wants to win a Sprint Cup championship under this format. Jeff Gordon, a winner in Kansas. Yeehaw! Awesome job, man. How does that feel, boys? That weight that just lifted off of our shoulders. And we welcome you to the Sprint Post Race Show. A terrific amount of weight off the shoulders of Jeff Gordon, the points leader with his first one of the season, ending a string of 13 races when he has not won. And of course, the 89th career victory, third all time. And the first three-time winner here at the Kansas Speedway. And Steve Burns is down there for the celebration. Steve. Jeff, 89th career victory. You guys have been so good this year. Did you know this was going to be the night? I knew we had a fast race car. We've been bringing fast race cars every single weekend, and it's just given me so much confidence uh, in, in the race cars and the race team. Um, I got to thank Exalted Coding Systems with an awesome sponsor. And when the lights went out, we could still see this thing out there. And uh, of course, AARP and Drive In Hunger and Pepsi Max. Um, also Valvoline Chevrolet, but uh, you know, Kevin was tough. He was so strong. I did not know if I could hold him off, and I almost didn't there at the end. When I caught traffic, the car just got extremely loose on me, and he, he was just coming, so luckily that was the checkered flag. You guys say happy Mother's Day. Uh, what, what an amazing Mother's Day present this is going to be. Can't wait to see uh, my wife Ingrid and my mom tomorrow. It's going to be an amazing celebration. This is, this is so sweet. I mean, what a huge weight lifted off this team's shoulders. We've been leading the points, but we need to get to victory lane, and they proved they're capable of doing a great, great job by them. What was the key to winning this race, Jeff? Well, I think it was overcoming a lot of adversity. We had a lot of things in the first half of the race that did not go our way. We knew we had a fast race car. We weren't sure if we had as good a race car as Kevin, but I thought if we got in front of him, we could hold him off. And then that last pit stop, I mean, you know, we cycled out in front of Kevin, and uh, it was confusing because there were guys still out there, so we weren't we weren't in the lead. And I pulled away from him. The car was just driving unbelievable. And then all of a sudden, I started getting extremely loose. And he faded, but then he kept coming back on me. And then my car would tighten up, and I'd go forward again. And then he'd fade, and we just kept going back and forth. But uh, the key was getting out front. And this pit crew and Alan Gustafson, all these engineers, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, that's who won this race because we've been building up to this all season long. Enjoy the win, Jeff. Woo! You can um, believe we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah! Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Tremendous last lap effort by Kevin Harvick in the 29. Can you pinpoint, Kevin, where this one got away from you? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of pins, I guess you could point at, but uh, in the end, I ran out of gas coming to pit road, and I didn't. I was paying attention to that and didn't get enough um, RPM down pit road and then didn't get out of my box very well, and he wound up getting by me there um, you know, as, as we came out of our pit stop. But uh, I found the groove that worked for me with our Jimmy John Chevy tonight just... Um, I slipped there with about um, 10 or 11 laps to go and lost all the ground that I'd made up, and I made it all back up again. But uh, weird night for sure, but uh, proud of everybody on our Jimmy John Chevrolet. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Jeff 